Yes, I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman, Alfred. I'm Batman. I am Batman! I'm Batman. I'm Batman. Greetings, Bat family. Welcome back to Holy Batcast, brought to you by Real Fans for Real Movies. Make sure you visit our website, holybatcast.com. It is your one-stop shop for all things Holy Batcast. But you can also find us all over social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Just search for Holy Batcast, and you will find us. And if you love the show, you want to help support the show, you can do that on Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash holybatcast. And so I think I've got some patrons i got to give a shout-out to. Oh my gosh, I should have been more prepared. All right, yes, I do. We have new patrons, guys. Amazing. Uh, first one, Jim Scroggs. Jim, did I give Jim a shout out? I don't remember. If he, it maybe gets two. That's fine if he gets two. Jim has been like a super positive member of our community online for years, and he made it official. He became a, an official patron. So thanks, Jim. We also got Michael Gendron. Hi, Michael. And I know that name, too, so I think also someone who's been supportive and, and part of the family. So thank you, Michael. Uh, Gendron sounds like the most awesome Transformers name, so I'm just saying. Ooh, I like it. I'd buy that toy. Um, and then we've got Spencer Toykin? Toysen? Oh, these things need to be spelled phonetically, so I'm going to screw it up. But Spencer, thank you as well. So look at that. Three. Three in a week. Any coincidence that we're talking about the third Batman movie? It could be. I don't know. But anyway, thank you guys. Seriously, it really does mean the world to us. Uh, and if ev everybody who's already done that, we do appreciate it. So thank you. Again, that's patreon.com slash holybatcast. Uh, we're part of the Real Fans Podcast Network. If you are looking for other shows to check out, you can check those out at rf4rm.com. And as always, I'm your host, Andy DiGenova. You can follow me on Twitter or on Instagram. It's just my name, Andy DiGenova. And as I just said, we are going to be celebrating a momentous occasion. We're, are, we're going to do a commentary for 25 years of Batman Forever. That's right. It's happening. And so joining me, first of all, we couldn't, we did, we're doing this for him, really. It's his day. It's Brendan Lowe. Hey, Brendan. <laughs> How are we, guys? We, this is all for you. I feel like it's the beginning it's, of the omen. It's all for you, Brendan. And then I just throw myself out a window. It's not, it's not all for me. The, you know, it's look, it's 25 years of this movie, love it or hate it. So it, you know, it needs to be celebrated, I feel. And I've been celebrating all week. If you've been following me online. I, I mean, it's like, a, it's like how every year I celebrate my colonoscopy. Same thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but you, you'll be happy to know that I have already recorded a nightlight where essentially I, I spewed all my love for this movie and, um, you know, talked about the reasons why I love it so much and everything. So I kind of got it out of my system. So I wouldn't be doing that tonight because I know that you guys, particularly Andy, you don't necessarily love this movie at all, let alone to the length that I do. So <laughs> he, he had to record that podcast because we're going to flog this thing to death so bad. He's going to need something positive to listen to after. <laughs> I love that Brendan is like, I'm doing a Batman Forever podcast with Andy and Jamie, but first, I'm going to masturbate on my own podcast for an hour, <laughs> alone. No one you else. You know one out before the threesome started, okay? <laughs> you know what? Well, you don't want to shoot you on too early, but I did actually say at the start of that episode, I'm like, this would be somewhat of a masturbatory episode for me, because I just need to talk about how much this movie means to me. That episode is only available on Brendan's OnlyFans. So guys... <laughs> <laughs> guys it's worth every penny <laughs> cough up the dough so worth it um i gotta say you already heard him i gotta i should introduce him but it, jamie's here too yeah jamie he's up at like 5 a.m on father's day because jamie like me committed committed um and brendan should be committed is the committed, way it goes yes correct i mean for doing this we should all be committed but that's okay and you know what I, I watched a little bit of the movie. I was trying to get my TV settings dialed in just right before we started here. And I watched like 17 minutes of the movie before uh, we, we hooked up on the call here. And it, 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 whew, this is going to be interesting. Yeah. We've yeah. already done Batman and Robin. So, you know, it can't be Which, that bad. 
which you guys know full well how I felt about that. And, and I've that. always... Best I've always been one life. advocated that this was better than Batman and Robin, but watching those 17 minutes just now, I'm I'm not sure it really is that much better than Batman and Robin. It's, it's really course, not. It could be because Andy's been beating that into me for like eight or nine years that they're the same movie. It's your preference. Yeah, it's your preference. Do you prefer a dog shit sandwich or a cat shit sandwich? It's up to you. <laughs> anyway. Which one's which? <laughs> your choice. Anyway. Uh, this one is this one is for you, Brandon. It is. Oh, Lord. So like so, sometimes when you're in a relationship, you've got to do things you don't want to do. Sometimes yeah. you do something for them. You know, so like this is it's like Brendan's birthday. And like as a good life partner to Brendan, I have to be like, you know what, honey, you can have whatever you want. And this is what he wanted. So like this is the birthday sex for Brendan. <laughs> Although I'm pretty sure you're going to experience it different to what I am. Well, so, I mean... Uh, different I'm, cavity. <laughs> it, that is true. I mean, that's why i have trying to loosen up. Because, yeah, I you're mean... You're drinking. I'm, I am. I'm drinking, guys. I don't, you don't ever drink. I, I, the last time I drank during a podcast was when we did the Batman and Robin commentary. So, <laughs> is there a pattern? Perhaps. Could, could be. Um... But yeah, I got my drinks here, so you're gonna you might be hearing some drinks. Uh, oh well, what are you gonna do? And I did. And first, first, like going in, I was like, okay, well, I don't want to rain on Brendan's parade. I know he loves this movie. I know a lot of people love this movie, so like, I don't want to rain on nobody's parade. So I'm gonna try and stay positive. And then I'm like, or I can just drink and see what happens. <laughs> I will say, unlike the Batman and Robin commentary, the second I answered the call, I could tell that you'd started and. Um... <laughs> for the listeners, I, I've been sort of grinning and giggling for what almost twenty-five minutes now. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a big drinker, but sometimes to get through it, you drink. It's it's just a little more noticeable than I remember being for Batman and Robin. So by the time this movie's over, I, I think you're going to be having a whale of a time. <laughs> could be. Could be. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh. Going back to the celebration of 25 years of Batman Forever. Going back to that. Okay. So, yeah, it's 25 years. You know, of course. Commemorate the occasion. I get it. That's cool. Um, but <laughs> today, <laughs> today, uh, my, my lady friend, Catherine, uh, she was on her phone and she's like, geez, Brendan really <laughs> loves Batman Forever. Because everyone else, it was like a day. And Brendan has made it like a month-long celebration. I, I've made it a week, thank you very much. I it just feels like a goddamn day. month. <laughs> We've had to see every piece of paraphernalia in Brendan's closet that has a Batman Forever logo on it. You've seen the stuff that I have in Brisbane. <laughs> I've got all the toys and stuff back at the family home in a different town. We've seen it all. Because, so. because I don't know what else to say to that, all I'll say is, Oi! <laughs> oh but yeah so let, we're gonna do this um it's all in fun guys if you love this movie don't take it personally y'all know i don't love this movie you're going into this 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 commentary wide, eyes wide open I, I don't pretend to love this movie so and if i'm like if and if it's one of those like if you can't say something nice don't say nothing at all i could also just sit in silence i could do that too so, well, you know, my mother did always tell me that, but unfortunately my mother passed away in the year 2000, so she's not here to correct me for doing it. So, yeah, you guys are just going to have to deal with it. <laughs> and I, I also say, here's the cool thing is uh, we're doing a commentary for Batman Forever. We're the only ones who did this this week. The only ones. We're the only podcast on the internet who did a Batman Forever commentary. Well, I'm sure we are the only ones named Holy Batcast, the All Batman podcast brought to you by Real Fans for Real Movies. Okay, yeah, that's, I mean, fine print, fine print, yada, yada. But yeah, I just... Well, to, to be fair, I, I did see a lot of podcasts, I did listen to a lot of podcasts um, celebrating the 25th anniversary, but I only saw one other commentary. I so, saw I mean, quite I, a few commentaries, actually. I'm, I'm being facetious, if you can't tell. I've seen a bunch no, of I, them. I could tell. Okay, good. Because I was laying it on pretty thick. You were. Okay. Um, but yeah, so anyway, <laughs> we're joining the party. You were being about as subtle as this movie. Exactly. 
Exactly. <laughs> Listen, and this movie is nothing if not nuanced. That's what I like about it. Is it has it has very important things to say about the human condition, and it does it with subtlety and class. Also, lots of one-liners, lots of puns. I hope you love them. Okay. So, I, I'm pretty sure it went by quick, and I wasn't paying attention because I was like halfway eating my breakfast and halfway watching it. I'm pretty sure that it said something about being written by Tim Rooney. So, oh yeah. Oi. Uh, Tim, Tim did all the ice puns in Batman and Robin. But actually, to be fair, there's not really a lot of puns in this movie. That that really is a Batman and Robin thing and really a Mr. Freeze thing. This this one really is less puns, but more one-liners. Yes. They kind of switch. Yes, that's yeah. fair. Yeah. That's fair. I will give you that. It's not as punny as Batman and Robin, but, well, we'll get to it when we enjoy this fantastic film. But especially Jim Carrey... He can't let one line of dialogue end without ending it on a joke. Oh, shit, no. But it's 1995 Jim Carrey, so what do you expect? Um, yeah, well. So, let's do it. We're not going to have the, well, hopefully we're not going to have the timing issue that we had for Batman and Robin. Um, so what we're going to do is, like, I think what, that was when we tried to, like, oh, we're all starting at 0, 0, 0, 0, but we were all you know, watching different versions, and so... It got out of sync, and for some reason in Australia it runs faster. Which maybe that's why that you was, like this movie was, so much is because it's like fifteen was minutes shorter as well. Yeah, could be. <laughs> well, it, in Australia everything has to run faster because of all the venomous and toxic and man-eating creatures. So it's just a, it's just the way down there. Yeah, I mean, if so be it. So uh, what we're gonna do instead, and I think it's something we did with like Man of Steel when we did that commentary is. Um, Instead of doing like a, a time, we will just we'll let up the WB logo fade up and then we'll pause and then we'll all hit play at the same time. And I think it'll be close enough. It shouldn't it shouldn't be an issue because, like I said, I did the superhero stress podcast a couple of weeks ago. We did a Batman Begins commentary and there was three of us. then. I think all three of us were watching it on different formats and I didn't have a problem. We were all synced up the whole way. So I think that might have just been a DVD thing. DVD man, didn't they do a Batman Forever commentary too? I feel like he did. I feel like no, uh, they, they, they did a retrospective, but it wasn't a commentary. Okay. Well, all right. I'm pouring another drink. Here we go. I this ought to be interesting. I mean, this, this is this podcast is a really rare role reversal in that I'm not drinking because here it's six thirty-five a.m. on a Sunday. And Andy is drinking, and that's just a, a strange dynamic shift. Welcome it's, to the Bizarro 5 p.m. on out. Sunday. <laughs> I'm just glad we're doing it in the evening so I can drink. Also, also, fun fact, this is only like maybe the third time in my life I've podcasted without drinking. Wow. Yeah. Special occasion all around. So, just, was, I've got my drink. Just, Jamie, you got not a drink. And Brendan, you got your pants down. So I think we're all ready. Yeah. I was just thinking, <laughs> forgive me, I'm thinking out loud here, but you're drinking. Jamie is a bit fired up because he doesn't like the movie, and I love it. And because we're doing a commentary, should there be a language warning? Because in case if anything slips out, you can't really edit it. Yeah, I think I am just going to hit explicit, so that way, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have we done I mean, an explicit on this show before? I don't know, maybe, but like, yeah, I don't feel like editing. So, you, usually, if somebody asks for an explicit, Andy's like, "Listen, you guys can drop a little bit of here and there, but you know, when it comes to the f bombs, restrain yourself because it's lazy." And he gives you this whole lecture. This tells you how he feels about the movie when Brendan says something about making this episode explicit. And Andy's like, "Yeah, fuck it." Just I <laughs> don't give a fuck. Just do it. Well, it's just because he's drinking, and I was just like, oh, the longer this goes on, I don't know. And it, Jamie and I are both guilty of accidentally letting it slip, so <laughs> it's just hard in a commentary track, because <laughs> you'll throw everything out. I mean, well, I mean, you could, you could, you could still go back and just, like, cut out the F-bombs, but, like, I don't want to, so fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah, still not going to be like the nightlight. It's still not going to be like the nightlight, though, <laughs> When I, this I one's him, he, 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 it was explicit and he dropped the C-bomb straight away I did not that's not true 
<laughs> that is 100 percent true <laughs> that is inaccurate no i don't i oh counts i said yeah what up counts the pitch perfect episode if anyone where, wants to go back where my that. counts at that's what i said <laughs> okay all right i'm faded up on the wb logo wait i should turn down the volume because then we get sued hold on volume is down i think okay, I, I, I have to do my usual disclaimer so everybody who isn't customarily following along when we're doing these commentaries are we doing i, I have to ask the lethal weapon the lethal two weapon two question <laughs> are, are we going to go three two one and then hit play or are we going to go three two one and hit play and one at the same time I, the first one three two one play okay how about that good enough all right in celebration of 25 years of Batman Forever, here we go. Okay, everybody ready? ready? I'm faded up on the WB logo. I'm watching on iTunes for this. It's four seconds, but it Blue faded. also four seconds. All right. It faded up, and I hit pause. And uh, now, away we go. In three, two, one, play. Yeah, boy. All right. Now, I will say, as an 11-year-old, the first time, you know, when I saw this in the movies, when the Warner Brothers logo morphed into the bat symbol, I thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. That's adorable. Because, <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the, the other two intros are really cool, but that just blew my 11-year-old mind. Interesting approach that they're doing, like, the Superman title logo. Yeah, too. which, I mean, this, it's it's thematically all or not thematically stylistically that's the word i'm going for stylistically it already is trying to do its own thing uh and these yeah these titles very consistent with here and, and batman and robin of like oh the swoopy you know the cast look at this hot <laughs> 1995 not the, cast not the cartoony sound effects over them which is you know an improvement on the batman and robin it doesn't have the whoosh the way no. really oh i thought it did it's got like a sound, but like in Batman and Robin, it's like motorbikes and kisses and all sorts of stuff. So right. I'll, I'll just immediately start in with positivity. I don't really think this is a bad looking costume. No, the suit's good. Oh, I've, I've always said the, the suit best, is good. It's the second best one, in my opinion, after Affleck. I love this Panther suit. Oh, this is what they call the Panther suit. I don't it's know who I don't know who deemed yeah. it the Panther suit, but yeah, it's a, no, so it's a good looking check, suit. Check this out from this angle right here. The Batmobile looks like a Skeksis head. Oh, Skeksis, mm. mm. Chamberlain. And the first line, a joke. I'll get jive through. First line well, of the Mc, movie, McDonald's. You know. Yeah, you know. And one thing I will say about this movie, you know, everyone says blames Clooney and Batman and Robin. The Panther suit's got nipples. Oh, I know. That started. The nipples this began People here. Go to yep. with that one, but I think they were more pronounced with Clooney. But yep, nope. This is where it started. And you know, it's funny. Of all the issues I have with the Schumacher films, I don't give a shit about nipples. Like whatever, nipples, fine. There are far worse issues. Um, I always thought it was funny that Rene Aubergenois gets a credit at the beginning and all he gets is that cameo at the end because his scenes um, got cut. I was going to say, what has he got? 10 seconds of screen time on this thing? Yeah. <laughs> this is the only time we really see Tommy Lee play Two-Face. Yes. This, this, yes. This first Probably. moment of him, of him actually playing it a little subtle, you go, oh, he could be really good. And then as soon as he gets it's into do luck. da, do da luck, that's when you're like, oh, okay, and now we've got Joker. Yeah. Interestingly enough, the subtitles on my Blu-ray cut out do da. Well, it's a it's a bad word, and um, deaf people shouldn't read it. <laughs> this guy, though, the best actor in the franchise. This guy, the the security guard, he's a treasure. I want to. I want to get him on the show. He comes Look back here. later too. As much as I love this movie, when I was a kid, when I was twenty, a kid, twenty, uh, I've always wanted to strangle this guy when he says the thing about the boiling out. Oh, it's so bad! It's so bad. But that, yeah, that's one of the worst deliveries in cinema history. Yeah. Without you know, I mean, I don't. 
know if they were trying to make it that bad. I'm guessing not. Well, I mean, it it's it, it, Schumacher said he's like, I was making a cartoon. So yeah, that's where all these over the top line reading line readings come from that aren't even well, like, main characters. Again, to be fair, that that is from Batman and Robin. The whole we're making a cartoon thing. Yeah, but he's doing it here, too, is my point. Yeah. How else do you explain... It's thematically similar enough. I can't contest that. Yeah. How, how, how do you explain that dude's performance if he's not being asked to go big? I still reckon this is one of the best... That, like, Nicole Kidman has looked the best in a movie. I love Nicole Kidman. I've always loved Nicole Kidman since the first time I saw her. I still love her to this day. I just feel bad for her that... She was in this. Yeah. She looks amazing. I'll give you that. But her character's awful. Like, literally, her character's only trait is she wants to fuck Batman. Like, that's that's her personality, which is like... I mean, don't we all? I mean, okay, fair. But, Jesus. But to yeah, can't... base an entire character on that is a little uh, two-dimensional. Yeah. Can't blame Batman for wanting to give it to her, either, just quietly. I really okay. don't think Kilmer's a bad Batman either. I, uh, that's probably not going to be the popular opinion nowadays, but I, I really did and still do kind of like him in the part. I'm with you. I like him. I Is think he, he the best? No. I think he but, looks I mean, good in the suit, but I've said it before. He looks miserable. He does not want to be there, and you can tell in his performance. He doesn't want to be doing this. I, I, I like him in the suit. I think he looks great. And we'll we'll come to it later on. You know, I don't want to jump all over the place in the commentary, but the the confrontation between him and Dick in the Batcave, where he says, "You know, I can stop you." I I really like that that whole bit too, and I think Kilmer did well enough with that. Yeah, but you you have to remember, I was excited because back in those days, I was still mad about Keaton, and that you know, I, at some point, I shifted from loving Batman '89 and Batman Returns to thinking Keaton was the worst idea ever for those movies. Oh, really? And, and the fact that uh, Val Kilmer was, you know, bigger, buffer, you know, that sort of thing. Just that just, he was bigger, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, to me, he uh, performance aside, just the way they wrote the character in this movie, though, you actually got to see more of the um, sort of like the genuine Bruce Wayne, you know? I mean, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but the scene after this, um, you know, the, ch the helicopter chase and everything, where you've got the big zooming shot coming into Wayne Enterprises and everything. I remember like loving that the first time I saw it because a the shot itself and with the reporter talking over the top of it made me think animated series. It sort of had that feel to it and sort of that Summer Gleason, you know, voiceover vibe. But it's the first time in any of these movies we've heard Wayne Enterprises, you know, the Wayne Foundation comes up. These are things that were never mentioned in the Burton movies. We just knew that Bruce Wayne was this rich guy who kind of, had business meetings you know I'm like a, i'm gonna pause you just right there for a quick second hang on to that thought i really like this fight sequence here i think it's well done this moment here where he grabs the guy to keep him from falling down the elevator shaft and throws him into the stunned guy and stuns mm -hmm. them both i think is a great batman moment and yeah. 15 seconds later he falls for this bullshit trap well even the, even the fight there's a couple nice shots in there but like that electricity stun you you're already into the looney tune sound effects of <laughs> you got the cartoons yeah yeah anyway i'm sorry to cut you off brennan i just wanted to get that in while it was actually playing oh so. no that's true but yeah no that's just my thing in terms of like the characterization of bruce wayne it is more what we're used to as opposed to what was in the burton movies again not trying to shit on them it's just you know it's a bit more bruce wayne to me understandable yeah but yeah here comes Mr. Exposition in a second with the, it's boiling acid, which is, you know, I, it, yeah. I do like the fact that it, I, I mean, I appreciate the extra effort that Two Face goes to to torment people and the fact that the acid is boiling. I mean, acid is enough, right? <laughs> boil it? I mean, he's really out for blood. Here, you know? And where's it coming from? And, and somehow he rigged up this safe for it to magically come out of the safety deposit boxes, which. Yeah, I don't know well, how you do every, it. Come on, guys, you don't keep Batman boiling acid just, in your safety deposit boxes, really? And, just me? Okay. Yeah. And going it's, back, it's we jumped Batman over it because Brendan was pontificating about Bruce Wayne. Um, one of the what I, I feel like you could pare down what's wrong with Tommy Lee Jones's performance in the way he says "blast him," 
when he goes, blast him! And that's when you go, oh, he doesn't even know how Two-Face is supposed to act. And on the page, if Two-Face had just been standing there and said, blast him, this it would have been awesome. also a great Batman moment. In the, in borrowing the hearing aid to use to crack the safe there, I, I think that's a really solid Batman moment. Thank God that dude had a hearing aid, otherwise they'd be fucked. Yeah, probably so. <laughs> but just the same, I mean, I, I like the idea that Batman's thinking on his feet, and he's, he's, he's quick, and he spots that, and he's like, okay, I'll use this. I mean, not like he couldn't pull a stethoscope out of his utility belt or something, but you, you see what I'm saying. I, I think that was well done enough. Convenient, maybe, but... Okay, this, even going back to the opening night, midnight showing, watching it that very first night, has always been an eye roll moment for me. What, the, the safe going back into the hole? The safe landing back in the exact same position that it was when they got it out of that wall. Especially yeah. held up by that little filament. <laughs> that tiny little <laughs> filament. And the wall that's clearly not concrete, but anyway. This this security guard, he's the same guy that comes back later on, isn't he, in the Enigma Tech thing. He's like, hey, Batman! <laughs> if sure if he's not, sure he might as guy. well be, yeah. I'm positive it is. And why is Chase there? <laughs> no idea, because she has to be. God, she looks good. Because the cops are always like, hey, psychiatrist from out of town, want to come with us? We have a problem. <laughs> this is some 1995 CGI for you. You know, I, th I think I remember watching some of the behind-the-scenes stuff, and they, they did some of this with, like, action figures. Like, I, yeah. I know the, the moment where he descends down, uh, I don't remember if it was the one where he first comes down and meets Chase the first time, or if it's when he's helping Robin with the, the gang problem later after he swipes the Batmobile. But there's that shot of him, like, swooping down with his legs out in front of him. That was done with some kind of an action figure, I thought they said. I don't know. It's been like 25 years since I saw the making of, so I could be wrong on that, too. Pointy-eared so night rat. I mean, you, you'd think people would come up with some clever things to call. Bats. I do like how the goons just call him Face. Oh, that was kind of cool. The pink face for Two-Face, like, is so weird. I don't know why they, the hell they did that. Even then, I was like, really? Like, that's how we're going to have him look in, in live action? But I don't know if it was just because Riddler was so green, so they were like, oh, we need to go the opposite direction, so let's make him pink. You know, this has always been... This is what I thought from the first time I saw this movie and still think it today... And I'm, I'm not I'm not saying so much, you know, just Two Faces face being pink, but just the color palette in general. Not so much the neon, but when you look back to what comic books looked like and how they were colored in the early '90s and everything, like even stuff like Nightfall that were these, you know, big serious story arcs and everything, everything's fucking bright colors. Like backgrounds are bright green and pink and people have like literally bright red hair and all that kind of stuff because it's how comics were colored. So like as an 11 year old seeing this in the cinema, I was like, oh, so when Schumacher says he's made like a living comic book, he's literally made a living comic book. Kind of like what Dick Tracy did, but I don't think this does it as well as what they did with Dick Tracy. But that's how I always took it, is because that's what comics looked like back then. Not Two-Face, though. Two-Face, especially no, I know, I know, in this time, he was green. Like his... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm not saying just like Two-Face's face. I'm just talking the colors in general. Oh, sure. I'm not making it... Yeah, I'm not making an excuse for the two face face. I, I totally agree. Pink's a terrible choice. And I okay, One of those so big buildings in the back or statues or whatever that was looks like it was wrapped in trash bags. <laughs> How bad is the CGI? Uh, I've never I've high. I've never liked that the Statue of Liberty in Gotham. I never like it when they do that. I didn't like it in the animated series. I don't like no. it here. Like, you know, it's the Lady Gotham. It's like, well, if it's if it's meant to be its own statue, like it should be something different. Like that's always kind of giving me the shits too. If I'm being honest. Right. So I get what your point was earlier, Brendan, about like this, this movie, I think did try to incorporate a little bit more of the mythos than the, than the Burton ones did. Like, Oh yeah, you're right. Like it's, it's Wayne tech, it's Wayne industries. You see Arkham Asylum for the first time in these movies. So like, I do appreciate that. It was like, Oh, those were some, those were new elements that were put in. I don't think it's particularly well done, but I appreciate that, yeah, he was trying to bring in other elements from the, the world that we hadn't seen before. Mm -hmm. 
Also, so what the hell? In this world, the Riddler already exists as like a mascot? Like there's merchandise of the Riddler already before he becomes <laughs> the Riddler? That's always been weird, and it's never explained. It's just like... It's just, it's already a thing. Kind it's, of, yeah. Ca- it, yeah. Like, it's like it's like someone becoming a supervillain in our world and being like, I'm going to become Colonel Sanders. Call me Colonel Sanders. Yeah, or like a random pop vinyl, you know, mascot or something. <laughs> What's old mate's name here, the, the other actor? Who's Ed, in Ed Bigley the- Jr.? Ed Bagley Jr., yeah. That's Ed Bagley Jr.? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I never knew that. It's the mustache is throwing me off. That and somehow his bright, screaming, bleach blonde hair is somehow the most muted color in the entire uh. thing. <laughs> <laughs> and one of these guys hanging out with uh, with Bruce is John Favreau. Yep. Yes. But you like I, I caught that. You never get a great shot of him, but like, yeah, he's always just sort of off in the back. I do like too how on the floor there's kind of that pattern, but it's clearly just covering up for what happens later where he pushes um, Ed Bailey Jr. on the chair and you can it's the tracks. Oh, I never noticed. That the chair is, yeah. Actually I, I know a couple of goofs in this movie that I don't know if you're aware of, I can point them out as we go. I like what the hell is in the top of that box. It's like gravel from a fish tank or something. I thought it was like styrofoam packing. Yeah, or, or, or styrofoam peanuts or who knows. It's, a, it's an interesting angle to make Edward Nigma in love with Bruce Wayne. I don't dislike it. The but obsessive. It's, yeah. it's so odd. Um, I just noticed that window looks like the James Bond gun barrel. Okay, come on, Brandon. We're, we're on Batman now. <laughs> 25 years on and I'm still spotting something new. And that bat signal we saw was meant to be the signal alerting him to go and, you know, to go to the bank heist in the original cut. Oh, so this took place before the Two-Face thing? Yep. It was um, Two-Face escaping this scene, then the bank heist. And that's how it is in the novel and the movie magazine and everything else. So I'd love to know how late the the edit happened where they took all that other, you know, the darker stuff out of it. They just felt like they needed to kick off with some grand action sequence, I guess. Mm. Yeah, and I bet that's it. Is they just... Which are, after the first two movies, I, I kind of get why. Like, I get it, but yeah. But the first two movies both open with a big Batman action sequence. If you're not straight, no pun intended, not straight off the bat. There's, you know, that five or ten minutes. Straight off the bat. Ha, I see what you did there. Sorry. I what did we think of, of this? The, you know, the direct tube to, to the back cave. In 1995, I was like, oh, cool. And now I'm like, yeah, it's stupid. It doesn't make any sense. But whatever. Nothing in this movie does. I don't mind it. I mean, it, it would make sense that eventually he's going to try and find a way to streamline how quickly he can get from somewhere to the bat cave so i mean i I guess it makes enough sense visually speaking and i don't think it's it's held up particularly well but the idea behind it i think works i think if it had just been like down to like say a you know sub sub basement level or something of wayne industries that would have been more believable than you know a line that goes through the yeah like like they're literally saying that he dug a complete line (laughs) From Wayne Industries all the way to to the Batcave. You can't do major Hello. city infrastructure without anyone noticing. Hello, Chase. She is a lovely, lovely woman. This is also the worst. And she looks the she looks the same in this movie that she does in Aquaman, so I'm just gonna go ahead and resent either her genetics or her plastic surgeon for that. She's definitely had work done. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. But I just, I, I just <laughs> love the excuse like, that she, she like uses. A new fridge. What? I heard someone say once she looks like a new fridge. Oh. <laughs> the, the plastic <laughs> surgery she's had done. I still think she looks good. Oh, she no, looks she great. she does look good, but yeah. I got to tell you that 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 tube transportation thing would have worked better for me if Richard Dawson would have been standing next to his desk when it happened. Oh. 
All right, that wasn't one of my better ones. Let's move on. Sorry. This and Moulin Rouge is where I think Nicole has looked the best. And for people who don't know, Jamie and I have a mutual appreciation for that movie. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Musicals are for people who are not manly like me. Bringing your scar psyche, I had no idea what that meant when I was 11. You know what I think Nicole Kidman looks best in? Yes. Oh, okay. Everything. Just everything. <laughs> I've never seen her look not great. Oh, Commissioner Gordon, Gordon in his PJ. But he had time to put on his hat. Well, a gentleman doesn't go out without a hat. Look, I thought it was funny. And it was played for laughs. Which that Gordon pretty much is exclusively. I mean, people say that, but the Burton films did never, never treated him, never played him for laughs. They just didn't do much with him. He yeah. wasn't played as a buffoon until these two. Oh, the line that the the moment in Batman Returns with the thanks for saving the day, Batman, after, you know, just calling for the signal, that's always rubbed me the wrong way. People give him a lot of shit for these two movies, but it, it started in Batman. No, Returns, in that's opinion. not a joke, though. What are you talking about? Oh, no, I don't mean it. Just the whole incompetent Gordon. Like, But he wasn't. He was, a, no, he wasn't incompetent at this <laughs> Come on. Him him thanking know. Batman for Batman and coming and helping? Like, how is that not Gordon? Oh, I don't know. I just, I don't know. That's so, a stretch. Um, he definitely I, went down from Batman 89 from where he is in Batman Returns. I, I used to work with this guy when I worked at the contact center at the phone company, and he always liked to point out Easter eggs to me in movies. Like, I wasn't paying attention to them. And sometimes he'd point out ones that, I was like, oh, yeah, I guess that is. But he was convinced somehow. I don't know if he read it in a magazine or what, because this was kind of before Internet was a thing. He was convinced that somehow or another this guy was going to be Aquaman. What? What? <laughs> yes. what? Yes. That's insane. He's like, yeah, did you see the Aquaman reference? I'm like, Aquaman reference? He's like, yeah, with the fish and... You know, going oh into the water God. and they never found the body. That's an Aquaman reference. I'm like, that's a little bit of a reach, but yeah, that's not even a little bit of a reach. That's a, what? Yeah, no. Although Ed Bailey Jr. is Aquaman, <laughs> it would be a hell of an interesting movie. Well, I mean, Ed Bagley Jr. is really big into environmentalism and all that, so I mean, it could have worked, I suppose. Ah. Yeah, that's like, that's like what decades before the shared universe was thing was even a thing. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, he was also quick to point out, did you catch the Superman reference? I'm like, Superman reference. He's like, yeah, with Metropolis. I'm like, Oh yeah. I mean, that was kind of hard to miss, That's but sure. Funny. I was going to say, because the closest we ever get to a shared universe with these movies is, is it starts with that line about the circus being halfway to Metropolis. And I remember flipping my wig in the theater over there. He's like, Oh my God, there's Metropolis. I was very restrained in my youth. Which, again, they took the, you know, any sort of restraint they showed in this movie, they took off for, this, for Batman and Robin because they had to actually name drop Superman for that one. Okay, listen, you're watching this scene that I'm watching and you, you just use the word restraint. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this scene. This scene is a headache. All the screaming oh, and yelling and, oh, man, I can't. I can't. It's Jim Carrey being Jim Carrey to the max. Ugh. When you watch this and think to yourself, Ace Ventura was a more nuanced performance. That's, that's a struggle. <laughs> Which, by the way, I love the first Ace Ventura. So. It's a great it's movie. Good. It's one of my favorite comedies of all time. Top five. But I mean, I just remember him being cast in this movie. I mean, Ace Ventura, Dumb and Dumber, The Mask, and then this. Like, that was All a hell of a span of about two years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he was just such a massive deal. Yeah, when, you, when he pushes him here, 
watch the ground and you can see the tracks that it's running on but in the other scene it just like it's it's like a pattern on the floor but they've built the tracks in once you know they're there they stand out like dogs balls oh see mm -hmm. stand out like dogs balls yeah Throw i've never out. heard that <laughs> but oh really that's a that's a everyone says that over here Similar to the uh, the vault going back in, like thankfully that cord was just the right amount, of, you know, the right length. Well, I mean, if Nidma is the genius you would think him to be, he could have made the measurements and calculations well, for that. I you suppose. Well, you could say the same for Batman then with the vault. Yeah, but Batman didn't exactly have prep time there. You know what I'm saying? Nidma <laughs> did. I gotta tell you, I'm a little sad I'm not drinking at this point. Yeah. <laughs> this <laughs> oh. tedious laugh. Oh. Like he couldn't just leave it at Surf's up Big Kahuna. He had to keep going, oh, a little rough on the land. Like it just he won't stop. And that's my issue with his performances in this. Is he just he can't stop himself and there wasn't a director to go, hey, we're gonna need to dial it back a little bit this time. Now I, I think this is pretty good how they did the the expedition re uh, exposition recap with the uh, two-face thing although the way that acid landed on his face it wouldn't have been so uh, uh that drives symmetrical. me nuts like is the fact that like they they thought enough to put the folder there to go oh that's how it's half and then he screws it up in the take and then they kept the take so it splashed on his entire face so he should be one face do you guys don't have a problem with batman like you know lit, trying to leap to his rescue do you it looks a little goofy but like whatever because I just know that over the years I've heard so much shit thrown on that scene of like, why was Batman in the courtroom and stuff like that? Like, again, the first time I saw it, I was a kid and the urgency of the way that Batman's just sort of jumping over the railing, whatever. To me, I always thought, well, you know, he's gotten a tip or he's worked out what's going to happen. And he's like raced to get there, but just wasn't, you know, didn't get there in time. Oh, no. He's, he's literally I, there, like sitting in the audience. Watch it. Well, See, I mean, I if Batman is the one that, that. that apprehended that mob boss, presumably, then him being there wouldn't be a big reach, you know? Especially if they're playing it more like a Batman 66 where he's a deputized agent of the police force. <laughs> Good. Yep. Definitely suicide. That Asian actor, does anybody know his name? I've seen him in tons of stuff over the years, but I have no idea what his name is. He's, he's also of, in Batman and Robin. Yeah, he's one he's of Schumacher's Robin. buddies. Like, he does, he, yeah. he and the, the black woman, they're always together. And, uh, yeah, they both are part of Schumacher's crew. Some Somehow they're scientists in the next one. Yep. Well, they get fired here, and then they go start a new career working at the observatory. I've always liked that design of the question mark they used for this movie. I thought that was pretty cool. It looks like a question mark, Brendan. I don't know how you work in Australia, but here, that's what they all look like. <laughs> Come on. I will say, I like the riddles. I do like the riddles. It's just a shame they don't amount to shit. But, like, on their own, they're good. They're also reverse engineered. I do like how quickly Bruce deduced what the answer was. I mean, that, that that's, there's a subtle, again, is the wrong word to use for this movie, but there's just subtle things that indicate to me that somebody somewhere got who Batman was. Mm -hmm. Whether or not they displayed it fully or, or well enough is, is definitely an arguable point. But See, I know Andy and I have had this discussion slash argument before, and I've said, to me, intent is a lot. And I think the intent going in with this movie was to make a good Batman movie. And the fact that there is a whole subplot of this movie that was shot, that exists, that, you know, that, it, that delves more into the psychological aspects of the character and that sort of stuff. Like, yeah, you know, the shit was going to be goofy at times and everything, but there was a, a different, darker movie here. And that was the original plan. I think till very late in the game, given, like I've said, the novelization and the movie magazine and that sort of stuff, there was none of that with Batman. With Batman and Robin, we got what we got, you know, which was a, a copy of this. But 
going in, that wasn't the movie they intended to make and release. It's, you know, it, which is still relevant today, given the whole Justice League Snyder Cut thing. But do, do, do you know, do you see where I'm coming from? Like, there, there was the intent here to make a good Batman movie, and I just don't think that was there with Batman and Robin. I, I'm here to tell you, if they cut Jim Carrey out of this movie and let Tommy Lee Jones play it uh, about eight notches down, I think there's a really good movie here. I really do. And I know that's probably asking a lot, but that's how I see it. But again, me. Just, just to address the thing with the riddle, I mean, Kilmer is a good actor. I mean, he's always been a good actor. And, you know, Andy says you can tell in parts that he doesn't want to be here. And, and I can't contest that because I'm sure it is because it was widely reported that he couldn't stand being anywhere near Jim Carrey when he was. Doing oh, he this. hated him. Hated yeah. him. So uh, just that moment where he's reading the riddle and he's he's deducing it and you can see as he's you know his facial expressions and everything as he's reading it and then the light bulb clicks and he just has that subtle shift in his facial expression as he delivers the answer and it's almost immediate but I I just think that moment is is really good and well done. How are you saying about you know taking Jim Carrey out of it and, and having Tommy Lee Jones play it down. For me, it would be removing Tommy Lee Jones and have Jim Carrey play it. Well, yeah, again, he wasn't known for it and he hadn't done it at the time, but have Jim Carrey play that, you know, that weird, almost evil sort of cable guy role, but, you know, slightly more psychotic. He could have been an amazing Riddler, but it's not what he was hired to do. He was hired to be the superstar comedian, rubber-faced Jim Carrey, which is why we've we've had that discussion so many times. And yes, uh, I think Andy's been the champion of this that pointed it out to me initially. If they would have done this movie like five years later and and Carrey probably would have been awesome in the part. Well, it was 12 months later, I think to the month that the cable guy came out. Yeah. But even, even that, a lot of, but even that he was still, he was still Playing Jim goofy, Carey. like yeah, he yeah. He, oh, yeah, he, he wasn't yeah. showing any nuance yet. I I don't I think that turn happened with the Truman Show, but you get Truman Show Jim Carrey as the Riddler, and then we're in business. But here, he didn't yet know how to dial it back when needed, and so he plays the whole thing at an eleven, whether he's Edward Nigma or the Riddler, and like even some of the cool lines that were written, he kind of ruins them by playing them all for jokes. And that stuff, like you know, as much as I, I do enjoy this movie, I I totally agree. Like I, I I do see the flaws in this movie, and I've said it a million times before. It's probably seventy percent of my adoration for this movie is pure nostalgia. It really is. It's the feeling I get watching the movie as opposed to the movie itself. Right, and that makes perfect sense because like. I don't like the movie. We know this, and the movie's a mess. But what I do appreciate about it is the nostalgia of it. I appreciate it. Like it, it's, it's a moment in time. It takes me back to 1995. I was as excited as anyone going into this movie in 1995, seeing Batman Forever stuff everywhere, the McDonald's stuff. Like, yeah, all of that's the stuff that's nostalgic. That's the stuff that's fun. And that's why I'll still pop in the movie now and then. For me, it just works better as sort of a screensaver than like a movie to watch. Mm. But this was at the, at, you know, at the age that I was, this was the peak of any fandom I'd ever had for anything. Well, that's the part I find so interesting. Ab- that, that's what I find so interesting about this is there's a gap of five to ten years in age. And in that gap, you have Andy and I and people of our age. You know, I I think I'm like four years older than Andy is. Where Batman 89 was our our big trigger moment for the character. Uh And then you have people that are, you know, five to ten years back of our age. Like you, Brendan. And it's this movie. I mean, this was your Batman 89. And it's not even really half a generation necessarily that, that separates us. But it's just... They hit you at a particular age, and whatever age it hit you at is is what brought you to the fandom, or or you know elevated your fandom, what have you. For me, it was elevation, definitely, because I mean I was five in '89, so I can remember that movie coming out. But it was because of that movie coming out that they started showing the reruns of the '60s show, and that's what got me. But and I, I, I honestly, 
reflecting this week, the thing that really hit me, and I've never thought of it before, is between 89 and 92, Ninja Turtles hit. So I, I sort of put Batman away, pardon me, for a couple of years. And I sort of came back to him in 92. But then between 92 and this movie coming out, Batman the Animated Series hit. So there was... Batman had become a constant and every Christmas between 92 to 95 and everything, I got Batman stuff, which, you know, so my love for Batman had been consistent, which it hadn't been before. I mean, you know, I was a bloody kid. I wasn't even 10 years old, but you know what I mean? Like, and then when this movie hit, it, it really was, it was, I was old enough to, to be there to understand it and appreciate it. And, I've said before like on this show, like I wasn't allowed to go and see Batman Returns in the cinema. So, and I was too young to see 89 in the cinema. So weirdly, and I, I do go into more detail on, on the night that I recorded, like Batman Returns was this weird kind of taboo for me. Like I was allowed the McDonald's Happy Meals and all the toys and the clothes and the comic and even the bloody novelization. But for a year and a half after it came out, I wasn't allowed to see the movie. And whereas with Batman Forever, it was everything. I was getting the Happy Meals. I was getting the toys. I was there first session opening day. And as an 11-year-old kid, I was totally the demographic this movie was going for. And it was just a moment in time that, you know, if I had have been three or four years older, I'd probably see it the exact same way Andy does. But it was it's just that short, you know, that age sort of between being, you know, not quite a teenager, but then the difference between that and then being a teenager, it made a hell of a difference. And two, only two years later for me, seeing Batman and Robin, I was kind of like, eh, whatever. You know, because by that stage I was 13. I was more into music and girls. And it, it is what it is, whereas this one was right at the right time. So things I, I want to point out here real quick. Number one, I love that the circus is some kind of a fancy, elegant, high society event. That's televised. Because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. we televise the and circus. And number two, am I unaware of some other version of the Grayson origin where he had a brother? Or is that just a thing that was done for this movie for some strange reason? I think that was just done for this movie. I believe so. Yeah. Does anybody have any insight as to why? Like, is it supposed to give some extra element or something? I, I, I don't get it. Yeah, I don't know. Because, yeah, I always thought it was weird, too, because I remember seeing this movie and being like, wait, why the hell are there four of them? Like, who's the fourth one? You know, especially because this brother doesn't look that much younger than his dad. So I was just kind of confused. But, uh, yeah, it's I don't know. It's just sort of a weird outlier is that, yeah, they gave him a brother. In this day and age, if they were going to do it, it would be a sister, too. Yeah. I don't understand the eye motif. I don't know if you noticed, like on the drums, there's sort of an eye and on the bottom of the, the big top, there's a, an eye. I don't know why. I'm not sure either. An early reference to brother eye before he was even created. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's just, I don't know. It was just something I noticed on the, on the rewatch being like, well, what's with the eye motif? What's going on here? So the guy, the guy that claimed that the Aquaman reference with the, uh, the Ed Begley Jr. character also says that the, you know, and later on they have the Dr. Burton at Arkham Asylum, I think it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously he's like, yeah, that's a Tim Burton reference. But he also oh, was convinced shit. that the, the Barker <laughs> at the, uh, the, the same guy that wondered if I caught the Metropolis Superman reference, mind you. Yeah. Uh, he also said that the Barker at the circus was a Tim Burton reference. And I'm like, okay. Did you know that the Flying Graysons, their outfits are a Robin reference? <laughs> <laughs> this was a, he was a nice guy. I didn't have any problem with him. He's just, he was one of those people that was so excited to be the smartest guy in the room. And he usually wasn't. It's like the funny IMDb trivia that they talk about on, Hey, do you remember? Like, you know, do you know that the toy that the Riddler has directly relates and is his inspiration for the costume he will later don in the movie? <laughs> Oh, that's Patty the most feel, not ugh. Batman moment ever. I mean, that, so that's, bad. that's worse than being trapped in the safe that easily or anything else. But I mean, he's just going to give up the ghost that fast on, on who he is. No, I, I'm sorry. I, that, 
And oh. everyone around him would still hear him. Just because Harvey couldn't, everyone else would hear him. <laughs> that, to be fair, he was going to give himself up in the dark night. Not that quick, he didn't. Yeah, I know, not that quick. But still, that, that moment where he grabs that guard from behind and then punches him on the way down, Bruce, not him is so flimsy and so ugly, I can't believe that. Even back in my days before I had any kind of an eye for cinematic goofiness, I, I thought they should have redone that take. It's just very flimsy looking. I do kind of like how he's sitting there eating the popcorn like that, but I, I don't know why. I've always got humor out of people eating popcorn when they're excited to be watching something. It should be a gif like the Michael Jackson popcorn eating. <laughs> I'm just here to read the comments. There's like 90 gifts of people eating popcorn. I, my personal favorite one is the big black guy that's eating the bag of popcorn, like, you know, stuffing it hand over fist into his face, like super fast. I love that one. Love it. And same thing, like, he's out there in the open doing this. Everybody can see him. But it's chaos. Well, is that woman sitting in the audience wearing a Vegas showgirl outfit? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be ashamed to sit next to her. Don't get me wrong, but, you know. I know this is movie logic and it shouldn't bug me, but it always has. When he lets the bomb go off the top of the building, it's got six seconds left and you can hear the beeping. And then when it hits the water, I think it's like, should have already had like, it's like an extra two beats that it shouldn't have had using the same beeping that it's already been, you know, established. But that's timing in movies never works out. I like the one dude with the random arm behind his back. It's like, no, look dead. <laughs> look awkward and dead. Okay, I'll put my arm here. <laughs> I mean, I've never fallen from four stories up, so I don't know exactly what my body would do, but that does look rather strange. At the end of the day, though, like, you know, they, they got the Robin origin. They, they twisted a bit for, you know, for the sake of the movie, but it's still it's still the Robin origin. Like, they no, got it, it correct. It, it, it tracks. The only, the only real problem I have with it, and, you know, this isn't even a criticism towards Chris O'Donnell's performance or anything, but in this particular movie, Robin is already too old to be Nightwing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is, I mean, yeah, that's the biggest issue. This scene right here doesn't make any sense. It's like, oh, this 25-year-old guy, he's got no one. Do you want to adopt a 25-year-old? Listen, I'm 45. If Bruce Wayne wanted to adopt me, I'd sign the papers now. I'm just saying. That's not, but that's not how the law works. But look, you got to remember, this is the days of 90210. Hang on, hang on. You, got, do you have a Dawson's Gotham Creek. Law degree? Do you have a Gotham City Law degree? You don't know how it works there. I know that when you're 18, you are legally an adult and don't need <laughs> to be, uh, you don't need a legal guardian. I know that. I think he's supposed to be 16, 17. Obviously, the actor's older, but like I was saying, this is the days of 90210 and not far off Dawson's Creek where you got 30 year old guys playing high school kids. So, But even know, later, like even the later, Bruce Wayne says college student. He even acknowledges he's a grown adult. It's in the movie. But that's what he's saying for his future. They're not even saying he's old enough for college at that moment. I think he's indicating more his future is what. Yeah, he is. Yeah, because he's talking about his future. Dick Grayson, college student. I mean, they could be saying like immediate, but no, I, I always took it as saying in a couple, a year or two, you know? Yeah, it, that's, it is. They're talking about his future. Sure, Jan. Okay. They are. No, they're not. He says, how about Dick Grayson College student? He doesn't say, how about after you graduate high school, Dick Grayson College student? Stop making shit up to make this movie better. I'm not. You I'm are. I'm not saying it to make it better. I'm just saying that's what I always translated it as. Same here. The line is like the this, line. This, this moment here where he goes in here and he showed him all the cars and the motorcycles and everything. To, he's just kind of subtly putting the hooks in him of, you know, showing him things that would be of interest to him that would make him want to, you know, stick around and, and be his ward or what have you. And then I even love the moment where Alfred comes in with the burger and he doesn't well, want to eat it. I think that's great. I, I think this whole thing, I think, plays out perfectly well. I mean, obviously, you know, the Alfred part is it's a joke, but it's one of those ones. It's not. 
over the top to me. It, it, it works well. I, I really like it that, particularly the moment with Alfred, you know, with perhaps the dogs are hungry. I'd like to see his involvement be a little bit more in actual day-to-day -day operations or, you know, at least show it on screen. But I do love Goff as Alfred. I, I think he's absolutely great. He's a hell of a tailor. That's the first time I ever saw a hamburger with onion rings on it. And I was like, what? That's so weird. And now, like, everybody has that. Love that, like in the head of its time. Things, sort of contemplating it. I just want to say, whoever invented that concept is absolute genius. There's really a thing with statues in this movie too. You notice that? Well, that was, I mean, that was a Schumacher thing. Is he, he even said that's why the suits had nipples? Is he want he? It reminded him of like Greek statues of the perfect body, and that's what he was trying to do. And so, yeah, there's statues all over Gotham, in any every conceivable size. But I mean, there was some inside of the Wayne Manor right there. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Everywhere, like they they were inside his office at Wayne Enterprises. They're obviously all over the city. They're in Wayne Manor. They're everywhere. Statues everywhere. I do like that shot, sort of. Like, it looks like 89. You know, they obscure the face, yeah. but, like, there's a little bit of continuity there. That's a nice year one cover swipe thing going on right there. I think there's a guy on Twitter and stuff at the moment that's launched a Schumacher Cut campaign. And, I mean, yeah, look, God bless you and all the best, but I, you know, it's it's not going to happen. But I, I'm not going to lie. Like I, I would really like to see what the original cut of this movie was. Um, you know, delving more into this sort of, you know, the the backstory with the parents and the diary and everything. But I would too, just because at least all of these flashbacks would be cohesive, and there'd be a payoff. Yeah, like like because as it is in the in the final cut, like it's so disjointed and it's really kind of pointless. So at least in the initial cut, at least that that backstory has a point. So at well, least the, I feel the, like the title of the movie has a point. Yeah. <laughs> like I still think it's a cool title, but cutting out that that subplot, the title doesn't mean anything. I am completely unaware of what you guys are even talking about. So originally the red book, like he has these flashbacks about the red book. And in the, in the current version, as you watch it, basically at the end he goes, Oh, it was my dad's journal. I realized then he'd never write in it again. So basically the payoff in the theatrical cut is, Oh, this book is what made me realize my parents were really dead, which, okay, great. But in the original version, I would have thought the cold, dead, bleeding corpses in the alley would have been his first clue. But OK. Yeah. You know, whatever. Um, but in the original cut, he read the journal. And in the journal, it said something about like Bruce is upset. Uh, and to, so to make it up to him, we're taking him to the movies. It was, um, I want to stay at home, but Bruce is insistent we go to a movie. Yeah, so, there you go. Something yeah. like that. So so the whole point is Bruce felt responsible for his parents' death because the whole reason they went to the movies is because he wanted to. Yeah, it was a repressed memory because he ran to the cave after the funeral, which you see later in the movie as a flashback, fell down into the cave, and that's where the Red Book is. Like, it's left down there. And after um, Two-Face and Riddler get away with Chase, after they've been to Wayne Manor and the cave is destroyed, when Bruce gets that bullet ricochet and falls down the stairs, he has complete amnesia. Like, it's a, it's a day or so, I think. And, like, he, he remembers his life as Bruce Wayne but doesn't remember Batman. And Alfred takes him into the cave and he sort of takes the journey back down, finds the red book, reads it, discovers the repressed memory. And then that's where sort of... I don't know if you remember seeing Jamie, like, promo images and stuff. And it was even in the trailer, a shot where this giant bat um, is there and like Bruce Wayne standing in front of it with his arms outstretched and everything. It's kind of his moment of realizing, no, Batman is who I am. And it was the repressed memory. Like that's, that was what was causing all his psychological problems in the movie, which also gave chase more to do um, instead of just wanting to fuck Batman, even though that was there, but she had, she had more, you know, impact on what he was going through. Um, 
And then, yeah, that's it, it, you even used it in the intro for the movie. If, sorry, for the show, Andy. It, it's one of the deleted scenes where he comes out where of the says, cave. I'm and Batman, says, Alfred. Oh, yeah. I'm, it's, and it's the only time his, his Bruce Wayne says, I'm Batman. They cut it because he discovers that he's Batman. And that's why with the Riddler, he's like, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, not Batman because I have to be, but because I choose to be. It's because he discovered that's who I actually, that's who I am. I'm choosing to be this person. I wish I had a car that could move side to side like that. All that Fort Wayne traffic? (laughs) No, because I'm terrible at parallel parking. Oh, okay. That would be handy as hell. But again, in in the original cut, the bat signal that you saw for this scene was him going to the rooftop for Chase. Um, And then when he jumps in the car after seeing Chase and does the, you know, the women line, as he's driving away, that's when Two-Face's thugs start chasing him. So there's actually a reason why he's being chased. Yeah, because this this whole little sequence is like it comes out of nowhere and it ends just as quickly. Yeah. It's it's uh-huh. it serves no purpose. It's just sort of inserted in. Um, it's it's called. It's did, been a while since there's been an action sequence, and we wanted to put one in there. Pretty much. And they didn't want to. They didn't want to delete the scene of the Batmobile going up the side of the building. Yeah. So it's just sort of inserted in the middle, which is it's a little awkward. Yeah. And and yeah, it just begins out of nowhere, ends out of nowhere, and you're like, okay, well, it's pretty much just yeah, it's eye candy for like, oh yeah, we you know we want the kids to get bored. I mean, if I wanted to make excuses for it, I could say Batman was out on patrol and they went out and found him. But yeah, it, it doesn't it doesn't make any more logic come out of it. Speaking no. of logic, how the hell does he get this thing down from here? It, it don't think about it. It doesn't make sense. It was. And why just wouldn't mod- they just stand it there was, and wait for him to do so? It was a modern homage to the against you know the Batman climbing up the wall in the '60s show. It's all it was. I get that, but at the same time, it's, I mean, it doesn't make it less stupid. It was actually pulled from the script of Batman Returns. In Batman Returns, when the Penguin took control of the Batmobile, in the script, the Batmobile was driving up walls and doing all this crazy stuff. And then when it came to making the movie, they're like, yeah, we can't make the Batmobile climb up walls because it doesn't make sense. And Schumacher's like, challenge accepted. (laughs) Or you could just develop an entire vehicle that was designed specifically to do that. AKA the Nightcrawler. Yeah, the Tumblr. Captain Kill. <laughs> like, there was a perfect opportunity here where he doesn't just steal the persona from a weird make a wish machine, where they use the line of Bruce Wayne, it just raises too many questions, of he being like, too many questions, I'll give you too many questions, and that's why he becomes the Riddler. How do you miss that? Hashtag release the Andy cut. <laughs> Why is Marlon Brando sticking his face out of that wall? Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> so one of so the this, this has kind of always been my favorite part of this because I love Debbie Mazar and Drew Barrymore. I so. agree. I like them. This this is the scene with one of the goofs in it. It's later on. It's I'll point it out, but you know how the Riddler makes his entrance in this movie. As they're walking back, there he, you can see him in the, on the side of the screen. Jim Carrey's there waiting for his cue. Oh, really? I did, I've yep. never noticed that. I missed that. I can't rewind it. Yeah, we can't rewind. Well, it'll give yeah, me some. As, as, as they're zooming back, you can just see Jim how Carrey funny the wings. Yeah, it'll give me something to look to look for when we do the thirtieth commentary. Can I tell you something about Drew Barrymore's character in this? Say whatever you want, because I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be right back. You guys enjoy. <laughs> he saw and, them, and he, now he's heading for his bunk. Uh, I'll be in my bunk. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I am saying this knowing full well that my wife is laying beside me, and I'm in within hitting distance. But again, as an 11-year-old kid, um, some of the promo shots of Drew Barrymore in that outfit, and particularly on one of the collector's cards that I had, could totally see her pubes. Really? Yep. <laughs> An 11-year-old me, you know, pre-internet, thought that was fucking amazing. <laughs> In America, we call those bikini spiders. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. Good met you. I, I've always had a real weak spot for Drew Barrymore, but then I found out I was exactly one day older than her, and for some reason that just made it all the more cool to me. So, <laughs> I the right uh, age. I've, I've, I've always had a weakness for Drew, always. But it's so funny, too, how in only a – I mean, I know she had been a, a star previously, but she'd had a couple of lean years, and then it's only, what, two or three years later, she became a huge star again. Well, I mean, she was Hollywood royalty from birth anyway. Mm. And she got, she got into the drugs and party scene like ridiculous early. Like 12, 13 years old, she was, you know, drugs, alcohol, the whole thing. I mean, that's even early by American youth standards. Yeah. And, you know, she, she had some struggles in that area. And, and listen, I don't think she's the greatest actress. I think she's perfectly competent. And, and I enjoy her more often than not when I see her. But she's not, like, ever going to be Academy Award material, you know. But no. then she got into like the production game, and that's kind of where she she seemed to really find her her niche. You know what I'm saying? I mean, she still acted, she's still you know active in that area, but the the, the production game is where she seemed to really come on. Like Charlie's Angels was was her production, I believe. Mm. And, and I you know say what you say what you will about that movie. I, I'm pretty sure the first one was was pretty successful. So well, it spawned a sequel. I really like the first one too. I mean, I, I won't apologize for it. I, I know what the movie is. It's exactly what it set out to be, just a good time without a whole lot of any real substance to it. But I, I enjoy the hell out of that movie. Which one? Charlie's Angels, the first oh, one. Oh, I love the first one. It's awesome. <laughs> I've never been a fan of the orange flat top, but I do like the Riddler's costume, like when he's got the, the bowler cap and everything on. Like, I, I do think it's a cool. You know, yeah, I, mean, I, I it's, agree. It's, it's, it's an updated Frank Caution, but I, I do like the the main Riddler costume when he's got the jacket and the, the hat. Yeah, and the jacket and the hat, he looks, looks good. But yeah, like the, the weird neon flat top, I don't know why that was needed, but. And it's clearly, I mean, it, even in this, as far as the story goes, it's got to be a wig, yeah? Did, like did I wearing... mention I love Debbie Mazar? Did I mention that all? <laughs> yeah. I agree. She's never you. looked better either, just quietly. Yeah, I agree with you. She has the most beautiful eyes. She really does. Did either of you two watch Entourage? No. no. I watched like the first two episodes and that was enough for me. I did exactly okay. the same thing. Oh, really? I, I, I tried and I was like, I hate all of these characters. I don't need to watch them. She Bingo. had, a, uh, she had a, a pretty decent recurring role in that series too. And she was really good. I do think that the line a little bit earlier on <laughs> when he does say to, you know, two face, that's never going to heal if you don't stop picking. I did think that was funny. I, 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 I'll concede that. Laugh. That's kind of, that was a funny kind of, line. Yeah. But you know, if it's just sprinkled in here and there, that kind of stuff works. But when, you know, as, as Andy's pointed out, when it's just boom, 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 one after the other, it's just, it's oversaturation. It is. It's too yeah, much. Like, like and right. earlier on, like when he was Nigma and he was talking about the guy's suicide and he goes, he's like a brother to me or an uncle or a cousin who visits all the time. And you're like, did that line need to be a lame joke? Like, why could, like for just a minute, play it straight, you know, like just, but like every single moment. See, yeah, he looks cool there. I did notice it was interesting that, Oh, is the laundry saying? Yeah, the Riddler. Uh, they don't incorporate the purple. He he's green and black, no purple. Yeah. Well, I mean, Two Face is wearing it all. Yeah, it, it, I, I I I honestly think that's why they made Two Face's face pink, and they didn't put the purple on the Riddlers. They wanted to keep them different palettes. And that's how we know he can handle himself. Yeah. But they they cut also, away. But after that. Alfred totally fucked Dick. <laughs> With the mop. Yep. And this was in all the promos, the <laughs> ball up the fist reach way back. Show me how to punch a guy. Oh, God. <laughs> and that cop just standing there letting him do it. Well, this is Gotham where it, police. I mean, this is where we get Schumacher's... Um, Influence. Yeah, I was about. I was trying to think of the best way to word it, but this yeah. is where it really yes. starts. Where to it come gets in. It, yeah, it gets but... very gay, but that's okay. Yeah, I... <laughs> but it does. Yeah, like 
Two-Face and Riddler spend the rest of the movie cuddling. Like, mm -hmm. they're in each other's the arms that, for the rest the of the movie. people that hated each other. Yeah. Like, pretty sure he's back in Batman and Robin too. Who, the, the TV reporter? Kilmer? No, the TV reporter, I think. So, uh, the concept of the riddles, I, I agree with Andy, you know, the... the the idea behind it's okay, but really, did they all need to be presented as children's pop-up books? Yeah. I mean, I get it to, like, make it theatrical. I mean, every again, sorry, everything's a little over the top. Everything's colorful. Everything's, you know, and I, that's all it is, is they're like, oh, it's a riddle. Let's make it visually interesting. And so it becomes, yeah, this big thing for each of them. Um, Jeez, he's rocking that earring and that vest. <laughs> Shag 1995. Hell Yeah. He needs to go to the peach pit and get the hell out of my face. <laughs> and yes, I'm ashamed of myself that I know what the peach pit is. Hey, I referenced 90210 before. I know. And the sideburns are a dead giveaway, too. Fun fact, back in those days, like just post my head having the bat symbol shaved in the back of it, my uh, the, the lady that cut my hair, she's always like, oh, we need to let your sideburns grow out. That's like the coolest new thing. I'm like, nope. Uh, <laughs> I still can't. I have them. never had sideburns in my life, and I ain't gonna start now. I, I've got little ones. I I hate the box. I hate this story. Listen, styrofoam so packing goofy. peanuts and oh. a blender, and you can control the world. Okay, it's, that's oh, all they're trying man, to tell me. I can't. I can't. With all the brain waves and oh, that's like a shitty knockoff version of the the Ghostbusters. I believe in magic scene. But that it's scene's awesome. awesome. <laughs> magic, magic, magic. I just rewatched that. I'd love that. to know the the um the amount of time that's meant to have passed between to build that damn lair. <laughs> yeah. And it's still under construction. He's still got the you know. I was going to say, is he is he at his grandma's house and he's sitting in a chair with a cover on it or what? I like that he outfits yeah, his his throne room with like concert lighting. Well, yeah, I was I rewatched the um, the documentaries on this yesterday to prepare for tonight, and the uh, the producer, the Peter Scott McGregor, said like he actually says, you know, we we filmed our own lights. Yeah. It's like they make they make up the set, which is in a movie you never film the lights. Oh, oh. I thought this was kind of cool, showing his capabilities, but again, like. The alarm system in the Batcave makes no sense. If there's an intruder, why does everything turn on and the Batmobile reveal itself? That's I mean, They want to show off for the intruder before they kill him. It's like, look how cool all our stuff is, and now, now you're dead. The, this is the Gotham City version of, you know you just fucked up, right? <laughs> I do love the scale that Alfred gives him. Oh, you. I guess I'm going to give you a costume now. <sighs> One thing I've never understood about the this Batmobile, uh, the toy and all the promo stuff, like it always shows the wings splitting apart. Right. And it, it only does it in the movie for like a split second. Just for that quick I'm second like, when I'm, Dick steals it. And yeah, it doesn't, like boy, yeah, it also doesn't serve any purpose. Like the other thing is like the big fin, like I don't love the Batmobile, but it's, it's fine. Like I don't hate it, but like the big fin... No, it, it sucks. The big fin, like, much like the ears at the end, it's so floppy whenever the Batmobile is driving that you're like, couldn't you at least lock that shit down so it looks like it does something? But it's so floppy, like, you know it's just plastic. Warner Brothers gave you a blank check to make this movie. It's a cool wig that the Carl's wearing, too. That's a wig. Is that, that is not her real hair. Okay. How many drinks you up to now, Andy? This is only three. I was going to say, not enough. <laughs> I'm a slow drinker. I'm, this is what I get for being a <laughs> casual drinker. <laughs> what are you drinking, by the way? Um, I found these things called beer mixes. So they're like flavored beers. So this one's like a lemony beer. Because I'm, I don't like 
beer. So I want it to taste like something else. <laughs> is, it, love, is it a Chinese brand? or? Uh, I have no idea. It says Obolan. Okay. So, I do love all the I don't know what that headshots. <laughs> <laughs> I liked earlier, we, we were talking over it, but when, when he sees that picture of a bat and he's like, a bat, huh? You like bats? And she's like, that's an ink blot. And it's like, no, bitch, that's a bat. Anybody <laughs> with a brain can see that's a bat. And they really went for like the Clark Kent Superman thing with this sort of with their story as well, which, you know, the love triangle with right, two people. Right, She's in love with Batman. Bruce is in love with her. Yeah. Nobody loves Bruce. Which, which, is, which is fine, but they take it that bit too far later on with, you know, when he does the, the infamous smile <sighs> when he walks away. Like, that's very much a Superman thing to do, not a Batman thing to do. All right, we, we can criticize that till the cows come home, but I've always liked that scene. I like him, I get him getting that great big boy smile because this this beautiful woman, you know, is is he finds out is in love with him and not his his crime fighting persona. I, I for some reason that just always worked for me. Look, I, I'm with you. I don't I don't hate it, but it, I, it's it's more a Superman thing than a Batman thing. Eh, that, that's not unfair, I don't think. I don't like Batman using his Batman persona to test his girlfriend. I, I don't really care for that either, but his reaction to finding out that she really loves him instead of Batman is, is what I do like. I do like that exchange too, where they're like, you know, which car did you take? This car? Yeah. The See, there's, there's, the, there's those floppy wings. I do like how the Batmobile apparently has three-wheel motion on it. I mean, I mean, is he blasting today was a good day when he's doing that too, or...? But yeah, it's the only time you see it like that, and yeah. it just didn't imagine. Yeah, like anything. some of the promo art and stuff, it only showed it like that. It was—it's really bizarre. Like it was. There's the McDonald's like, arches. Be, That's uh, the best. Sorry, sorry. And here's here's um and Vogue. Yep. Now, why didn't they have a song I, I, on the soundtrack? We we talked exactly a lot about. Right. But this is in Vogue, but Brandy's playing in this scene. Yeah, like come on. For shitty martial arts cinema fans, will recognize the leader of the gang as being Don the Dragon Wilson, also a former kickboxing champion. Which is also why everyone and, gives the neon gangsters a pass in this one, is because of him. Yeah, and in the early days of the UFC, he was one of the, the fight commentators as well. Did he have a role in those best of the best movies? No. Okay. He was in a tight. bunch of B-grade movies that he he headlined, but none of uh, them are are overly well worth mentioning. You know, because be that was that was the time when Eric Roberts. Van Damme and Seagal and all those guys were like the you know king of the hill sort of thing. But mm. you know, I, I don't think Don the Dragon Wilson ever even had one release in theaters. I think his were all direct to video. I do like the shot in a moment where. Um, you know, Dick's sort of getting overrun by the, the gang and you can just see the Batman silhouette in the background and then it, you know, moves and glides down. That's a cool Batman moment, I think. It would definitely be the coolest moment of this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get what they're doing. Like, I do think it makes sense that like, oh, you know, you're getting the entire Robin origin in one movie. So you have to make it so he doesn't need any training so he can be suited up in a, in a little bit. And so that's why this is here is it's like, Oh, well, we've got to show that he's already, he already knows how to fight. He's already an acrobat. He could put on the suit and still be okay because yeah, otherwise then you got a training montage or you got people being like, Oh, there's, he's just going to go out there and do it. Of course, that's what they do in Batman and Robin with Alicia Silverstone. So, Oh, uh, what am I saying? But yeah, here at least Which you go, you go, okay, he's able to hold his own. So that way when he suits up without any training, you go, Oh, I, I guess it's fine. Look, Alicia well, I mean, Silverstone can ride a bike, but you, you say Alicia Silverstone, ironically, the chick that he just saved always reminded me of Alicia Silverstone. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I'm not sure I didn't think that was her when I was watching it. But I mean, I'll, I'll point out once more, and I know comics aren't the same medium as, as movies and TV, but Robin's origin in the comic is like two pages. 
Yes, but okay. there's a montage that it that it appears like months go by right, in right, those right, two right. pages. I do like I do like this moment here with what he says to Dick. I tried to announce to the entire circus that I was Batman, but it was too loud, so I gave up on it. I like the cave for the most part too in this movie. Yeah, the cave's not bad. It's it's okay. Yeah, it's, it's okay. It's small. It's just it's a lot a more small. like sound stagey well, and see, a little looks, less cavey. Yeah. yeah. It looks bigger to me than the one we got in or particularly in Batman Returns, but Thank God I don't have to see the stupid hangers that his suits go up on, right? <laughs> right? Huh? <laughs> huh? I miss those hangers. Fuck those hangers. There, everybody <laughs> finally got to hear me say it, okay? Those hangers are delightful. Remember when I said you hangers, Jamie? Yeah, I remember. I still got them. They're sitting right next to my, my Blu-ray player upstairs in my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> I sent Jamie some, some coat, kids' coat hangers with the Batman logo on them. Like, I got to admit, I laughed my ass off when I opened the box, but I played it off after that, like, this guy's an asshole. Do you still have them? Or are they in your closet? No, oh, I just told you. They're sitting next to my Blu-ray player upstairs in my bedroom. Awesome. Andy's drunk. He can't remember. I really don't mind this exchange at all. I, I, I think it it's pretty solid. Yeah. Other than Chris O'Donnell not being very good, but, you know, that's completely beside the point. Alfred, this is the 14th person you've let in the Batcave in three movies. We need to talk. <laughs> I do feel like the um, the voiceover of the news that like is like explaining it happens multiple times in the movie. I feel like that was used to sort of patch the holes from the edit. Probably. You know, like I feel like because they, they cut out scenes. And then they, they were like, well, this is how we can get some exposition out, is we just have this omniscient newscaster explaining where they're going. She's quite lovely there. I agree. The thing I said before, Andy, when you were getting a drink about Drew Barrymore in these movies, is as a kid, some of the promo shots of her, and particularly in some of the collector's cards, you could see her pubes. Oh, dear. Well, good to know. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Andy will be on eBay for the rest of the episode. <laughs> and I also explained to Brendan in America, we call those bikini spiders. All right. I do think it... Apparently, the, apparently that's called, not a West Coast thing. I guess not. I've, ne I've never heard it called that. But um, it's also Both interesting that this is, a, this is a Riddler that doesn't give a shit about Batman. He, he wants to get Bruce Wayne. He has no interest in outsmarting Batman. Well, that was the whole thing. Like, Two Face wanted Batman, Riddler wanted Bruce Wayne. I, you know. But I'm saying the Riddler. I know. His I whole know. purpose of being is to outsmart Batman. And what a grand pursuit you must be. I always kind of got to chuck a lot of that line. Smooth. <laughs> you can call me anything you want. That's. Uh, I don't know why they. Huh? Listen, I don't hate this movie. I really don't. It, it's got a lot of flaws to it, and it's uh, there's some choices made I don't agree with, but I'm entertained enough by it, I guess. I love how just like cast iron, like not even cast iron, sort of like the the flimsy metal wall. Corrugated metal, behind. yeah. I'm yeah, totally corrugated iron. Movie, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Get those little curls going around the front of my forehead. And there's thing. Gossip Gertie. Did we see her before? We saw her. Yeah, we saw her at the circus, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she was sitting right next to Bruce, actually. Yeah, Bob Kane's wife. But like this woman with the red hair and stuff, like that's the sort of stuff that for me was like, well, yeah, that's what people look like in comics. They look like Carol Channing in a wig? What? <laughs> <laughs> I will say it now before it happens so you can sort of 
you know, notice it. But the, it's always, always bugged me the edit that they do from Batman landing to going into that jump off the, you know, the box ornament in the middle of the room. It's such a weird edit. Like, it's like they remove like two seconds of it for no reason. It's just, it's really strange. You, see, you know he, you've see, got yourself he couldn't even dance him. without being a jackass. Yeah. See, like I, I, I do like how he's trying to mimic Bruce throughout this, but sometimes it does get a little overboard. I, I was just getting ready to say though, when Drew Barrymore is given the most subtle performance in the film, that's kind of given an indicator of what you're dealing with. I think. Some of the aesthetic choices for this film just give me a headache, like how it was just spinning around right there, the yeah. lighting. No, the, the, this, yeah, this whole thing. Like, and the, the first shot when they go in, the, the neon band. Like, it is. It's just all just over the top. <laughs> the high-tech television. Fun fact, that was the expression on Kilmer's face when he realized what movie he was actually in. <laughs> I think he signed on without even reading the script, if I remember correctly. Like, Keaton read I mean, the script. Everybody wanted in on the action. Yeah, so. Keaton read the script and was like, no, I'm, I'm good. But Kilmer, like, was it having a moment because of Tombstone. And it was sort of his, like, you know, he was riding high off of that. And, yeah, I mean. So he's about to do a movie with Brando. Career-wise, yeah, it's like, yeah, of course you play Batman, you know. God, that course at Debbie Mazar in, like, man. Shh, don't talk. You'll ruin it. <laughs> They're saying on the making of that they had to have her on one of those boards that, you know, people, you know, women used to lay on in the 1800s when they weren't, you know, so they could actually relax because like, she couldn't sit down in it. That's all completely false. She's actually best friends with Madonna in real life. True, true story. Hand to God. Oh, that's uh, right. That sounds borrowed, familiar. She, she just borrowed that from Madonna. <clears throat> so I, I do like too the whole emergency Alfred, and then you know Dick coming out in a few minutes and doing the same thing. I thought that was kind of cool. That's a hairdo. And the fact that Enigma's talking to a, you know, crime boss and in front of everyone. Well, and like, yeah, like, so Two-Face, he's like drinking out of the two glasses, which you're like, oh, that's kind of cute, Two-Face, I get it. But it's just, it's so true, like, uh, for this, both of the Schumacher films is like, the villains, they only stayed on the surface level. Oh, yeah, he's Two-Face, so there's twos, but his personality in no way. There is, there's that guard again. Yeah, he, like he kind of lands, and then it's this weird, like I don't know that just it, that edit just never flowed for me. It always felt really weird. Yeah, that and it's punch clearly was a good nine inches from that dude's face. Clearly a stunt double too. Not that I can criticize that because in the nightmare sequence, it's clearly not Ben Affleck. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> in the scene where the paradigm. Hey, taking if over. anybody wants to go back and listen to when we were talking about the trailer, I said, "Hey, that this is not Ben Affleck here. This might be like some disciple of Batman or something." No, it was just Richard Citrone. This is a direct lift from Batman '89. Boom! There you go. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's still great. And Better in '89, though. Chronologically, it's the same guy. <laughs> People are dying. Let's make a date to fuck. Listen, we've all been there, right? <laughs> no, just me? All right, cool. <coughs> a lot of people dying when what you do? No, just the, the urge to uh, procreate overrides everything. Man, I mean that.
the shot of him jumping off the building was used in quite a few promo things as well, I remember. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it leads to my favorite shot in the entire – it's, it's actually – it leads to one of my favorite Batman moments in any movie ever. This, yeah. This, pretty, this CG 360 shot is good. It's really good. It There's a reason it was used in everything because it was really cool. And it still looks good. Mm, it holds up. And I know that was like a huge jump forward for them. They were so excited. They were like, can we get away with this? Can we get away with a CG Batman? And they do. Ugh. I could have done without the line. It's, yes. It's, yeah, it's not good. But like that moment, you know, cover up with the cape, do his little thermal protection gear thing. Hang on. Here, here we go. Here we go. Whoosh. And they think they got him. We're dancing the jig. We're we're cutting loose because we, we just roasted Batman. That's the gun that the two fast action. Wait, wait, here it is. Too. Here it is. Hang on. Boom. Running up there. They're all freaked out. He gets to the top. They come up on him and he's like, which bitch gets to feel these hands first? I love that shot. It's a good I shot. I love it. But yeah, that's the gun that the two fast action figure came with. I have the two pack, I think, of, of Riddler Two Face, but I never opened it. So it's like in a package in my storage unit in California. I told you you could just send all that stuff to me so you don't have to worry about the storage unit. Okay. Well maybe I will. <laughs> I'm not gonna promise you my son won't play with it, because like I say, he's pretty much moved into the basement now, so he mm. messes with everything down. Well <laughs> there you go. There's a moment here when he, um, when this Batman is, this comes This is pretty out. solid, too. Just, you know, Robin being the one that bails him out in that moment. I, right. It works. There's a section here. He Like, just before he lifted his head up, he looked very um, Keaton. He looks like Keaton in that shot. Yep, totally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Love this moment, too. Well, and Schumacher even said, he goes, he goes, I didn't want to do Robin. I just wanted to do Nightwing, but... Schumacher said that? Yeah. Interesting. Which is why the Nightwing name drop happens here. Is because he's like, I didn't really want to do Robin. He's like, I wanted to do Nightwing, but I knew you had to do Robin before you could do Nightwing. So that's why even in Batman and Robin, he's mostly Nightwing. I can stop you. I think that and the, the pissed off look on his face when he comes out of the fire are my two favorite moments in the whole movie. There's a there's a deleted scene you probably haven't seen, Jamie, where um, Dick's using, I don't know what they're called, but, you know, like sort of the, they're like a solid punching bag that's got all the sticks and stuff coming out of it where you hit yeah, all the sticks. Yeah, it's like a, a kung fu training thing. Yeah, 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 he's using one of those and it's got a photo of Two-Face on it and Bruce is sort of telling him, similar to the conversation that he has later on about, you know, you'll kill him and then what, you know, the, it won't stop, it won't just be him and all the rest of it. And Dick says, you know, no offense, but I don't think there's anything that you can teach me. And Bruce does this sort of like Kung Fu spinning kick and completely takes the top off the, the apparatus, like snaps it in half. And Dick's just like got this shot look on his face and, and Bruce is like, don't be so sure. See, that's a moment that needed to be in the movie. <laughs> that would have been. That's what I mean. Yeah. There's a lot of, there was a different movie here. Uh, there was a better movie here. Who sleeps like that? Full I makeup, too. I mean, hey, I sleep in full makeup. I'm not going to talk about that, but... You want to be nitpicking about sleeping in full makeup, my friend. I know you're a Golden Girls fan. Oh, so dude, it's, it cracks me up every time yeah. when they're like, all right, I'm <laughs> off to bed, and it's like full makeup and hair. <laughs> and they get up at 2 o'clock in the morning to eat cheesecake, full yep. makeup and hair. Full makeup, absolutely. Don't act like you guys don't do that. So earlier on, just a few seconds ago, Alfred, or Alfred and Bruce were talking, and Bruce goes, I've never been in love before, Alfred. Oh, man, sucks to be Vicky Vale and Selena Kyle, I guess. Apparently they didn't count. No. I mean, that, that's a part where, you know, one part you can make the case that they're trying to do a sequel off of those, and the other part you can make the case that it's really off in its own world and not a sequel to the Yeah, it's films. it's both. You know, like, it, it does a, try to have yeah, it both ways. Where. Before a soft reboot was a term. Yeah, it's it's a soft reboot, but like, 
I always I liked the line earlier on where they acknowledge Catwoman just because, you know, I like that they connected in some way, and then obviously Alfred and, and Commissioner Gordon. But so yeah, it's they kind of pick and choose. This one attempts to like have some very weak strands to the to Burton films, and then Batman and Robin just connects to this one and pretty much ignores the rest. All right, I'm gonna go recycle some coffee. I'll be back. Nobody pause the movie. Don't worry about me. I'll catch up. You sure? Because we can. You're gonna miss the smile. He's seen it. It's a gift. <laughs> it's easy to find. Apparently, there was—I don't know if it was in one of the books or if it was a scene that was shot. But when he got to the apartment, he saw the table that previously had all the photos of Batman on it. Now has photos of Bruce Wayne. <clears throat> well, at least no matter who she's in love with, she's still creepy and stalkery. Yeah. This is another, shall we say, Schumacher influence yeah, scene. Yeah, this is where they're cuddling. It's real cute. I, I, I do remember hearing something where Jim Carrey said he like was eating nothing during filming because he had to wear this this mm-hmm. leotard, mm-hmm. which I understand. Oh, yeah. I am um, TMI, but we're amongst friends. Uh, I did a play when I was like 23, 24, and I played Adam, like Adam and Eve. And I essentially had to wear a flesh-colored oh, version of this. Flesh-colored leotard, yeah. yeah. Um, With the but, maple leaf? Uh, yeah, but at the time, I didn't mind it because I literally thought, well, I won't be able to wear this without embarrassment my entire life, so I'd better do it now while I can. <laughs> so I feel him, is my point. Is, is like, yeah, you know you're wearing that? You don't eat. And this See, part, this part just comes out of nowhere. At no point yeah. up in this movie does he ever say, maybe I should quit. Like, that's not even part of the conversation. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I decided I'm quitting now. Yeah, because, yeah, there were scenes that were just cut out. And that, again, like, if you're looking at it as a movie, these are the things that bug me is like, to your point, at least with whatever was the original version, all of this subplot should have connected and at least was some sort of arc. But in the in the theatrical, it, it isn't. It's very disjointed, and you're like, "Wait, what, why yeah. are you quitting? Like, this hasn't been a problem." No. Did I miss it's, anything? You missed the smile. Oh. It was hilarious. It was Batman, but he smiled. <laughs> so funny because like he was like oh my god like do you want to like sleep with me or like are you in love with bruce wade and she was like i love bruce wade and he was like grin and he ran away it was so good i think his descriptor of that was probably better than the actual movie itself. here we go it's halloween. halloween it's halloween i do like the little jack-o'-lantern not front of wayne manor festive alfred even in all of his supporting duties for batman he makes time to carve a jack-o'-lantern Fun fact, that's uh, foreshadowing the, the comic arc, The Long Halloween, that would come out some years after this movie. Oh, my God. That's a cool-looking shot of the bat suits in the... I, where are the hangers? That doesn't make sense. Hangers, by the way. Jeez, I love that cow. Out of the original four movies, that's my favorite cow. It's good. No, I, 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 I like I said at the beginning, I, I like the traditional suit. Like, I... It's it's good looking in this. I mean, the sonar suit's not even that bad. It's it's just you know a, a different spin on it. But yeah, I mean, I've said this in other things though. Is in in whatever movie we're talking about, is I always prefer the traditional costume always. So yeah, like yeah. even in like Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four, which is coming soon, I love how she looks in the traditional suit. And the eagle thing is cool, uh, but I'm like, I want the traditional yeah. suit. Yeah. So another goof coming up is when uh, Two-Face and Riddler are at the door with their twick or tweet mm-hmm. thing. And the guy who's clearly Michael Goff stunt, stunt, stunt double, when he takes the fall, the tray lands in front of the door that he knows Jim Carrey has to open. So after he's hit the ground and is out cold, if you watch his right arm, it pushes the tray to the side so they can open the door. Oh. Yeah. And it's a really bad wig, too. You can tell it's not Michael Goff. 
Is this the most Schumacher that we think Riddler and Two Face get in this movie? This scene here. I I, I know. I think the most is is when they're in the car and they're wearing jewelry. I know, this is pretty full on. This I mean, party. throughout, throughout. And I just want to imagine that, like, when they yelled, "Oh yeah, you're right. This is this is hot. I like it." Only fans and pay. Um, <laughs> I I can just imagine after they hit cut, Tommy Lee Jones just going get the fuck. Away. That's that's what I was gonna say. Is like I want to see cut and and Jones just like pushing him away and walking away. <laughs> but credit to Tommy Lee Jones as an actor, I believe he likes cuddling and spooning with Jim Carrey. <laughs> Yeah, all this stuff like it's it's really cool, but it's just it's all for nothing, unfortunately. In this this theatrical cut, it's well, and it's funny because you mentioned earlier the deleted scene with the big bat. Um, they use the bat where they can because it got cut out of the you know the big scene. Which honestly, I've seen the deleted scene. I don't know if it would work. It's pretty it's pretty cheesy. I don't know. I don't know. But like they used the bat. I when they were it costs like, a lot of money too. Well, exactly. So they, but they paid for it. So they tried to find a way to put it in here. And so they put it in, uh, where they're like, Oh, let's see what's on Bruce Wayne's mind. And then they're about to put it in here again, just by itself. Cause by itself it's fine. But the shot of Bruce standing in front of it, I don't know. I don't know if it would work. It's tricky too, with the deleted scene. Cause there's no, Score um, or anything. Score or anything. Yeah. I mean, you can hear the and the, the animatronics and the fan blowing on Kilmer. Yeah. So yeah, I think this is where we get it, right? Yeah. And again, to be fair, like you know, with the Burton movies, we understand why Bruce. You know, we get the murder of the parents, so we get the motive, but we never get this we never get the falling in the cave moment the seeing the bat like the reason for him being a bat right Just, yeah i mean like even his, his dialogue here it's cool i mean this is bang on bruce wayne batman stuff. well it's... yeah the, the line where he just said you know i would i would ensure that what happened to me never happened to anyone else again. I think that's probably the the most Batman line in this movie. You know, a lot of people point to the one at the end of, oh, I'm Batman and Bruce Wayne because I choose to be. I think that's kind of bullshit. This one feels much more in character. I think the trick or tweet is next, if my memory serves. Lucky son of a bitch. <laughs> that was a hell of a kiss. She was just happy to be kissing someone who wasn't Tom Cruise. This is the, I was going to say, this is the first of two Tom Cruise wives we have in Batman movies. Here we go. Watch, yeah, watch. When okay, I'm going to watch. Yo, you're right. Commas. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> Good save, Al. <laughs> Alfred, always helpful. I don't know why he's not wearing the jacket. I'd be wearing that jacket everywhere if I was him. <laughs> and I don't know the point of this cane, but it, it's I guess it's one of those things. You just go with it. It's not important. Like, it can... It's Yeah, it's one it's of those, got... like... It's a comic book. The cane can open doors. It's fine. Don't ask questions. And this must be the... Um, is it the spank me suite on the, <laughs> on the soundtrack? <sighs> yeah. Here's the intruder, you know, the best burglar system in the world. Yeah, this cane sort of becomes the, I don't even know what the right word, word for it. It's not really a like MacGuffin, a mag mag but... An electronic magic wand. But it, yeah, it essentially it can, can do anything that he needs him to in this moment. I will give credit to Jim Carrey. Like, he worked that cane. Like, he, he put in the work, he practiced with it, and, like, it, it's like an extension of him, so... He works that that same behind the scenes thing I watched that talked about the using the action figure to shoot a couple of those shots. Uh, 
some lady was talking about it in the thing is like, yeah, he he practiced with this thing day and night for like six or eight weeks. And yeah, people did. would see him coming with it and they'd run for cover because he was always banging it into stuff and dropping it. And, you know, it fly out of his hand and hit stuff. I, I got a chuckle out of her saying that for some reason. Yeah. But I mean, but yeah, it you're right. He deserves credit for putting in that effort. Because yeah, because be he, he the way he he flings it around and uses it is really good. And for some reason, he has like the little green goblin pumpkin bomb style things there. I, obviously, I hate Harvey throwing, you know, flipping the coin all the time. But I do like the the moment where Chase pummels that guy and he just gives the. Huh. <laughs> Oh, this part of the sound effects. Oh. <laughs> yeah. These are very CW explosions. Like, they're not doing a lot of damage, and it's a lot of sparks. Well, I mean, again, that was that was very much the Schumacher aesthetic, is, you know, the, the blue flames and the explosions that are fireworks. And, you know, it's, it's to make it all fun and just a little more kid-friendly, you know? Softens the edges. I remember being so pissed off when I first saw this in the cinema, how he blew up the Batmobile. How do you think Bruce felt when he got down there? He felt sad because it was his car. But the thing, too, I mean, again, you just kind of go with it at this at the point where it happens. But we, where they're playing Battleship, you know, they've got the little figurines of the bat boat and the the bat wing. It's like, a, how did they produce them? And b, Riddler never went down there. The whole battleship thing is ridiculous. It, it's one of those things that someone said, wouldn't it be funny if, and nobody bothered yeah. going, that's too much. The words too much were never said. When it, exactly. And that therein lies the problem. No one ever said, you know what? That's too much. Let's pull it back. I do like that line. He, he will learn nothing. I like that. But it is a perfect supervillain move of like, we could kill him, but we're not going to because that would be the end of the movie. But yeah, I'm not sure how long it went for, but there was a whole segment here where, yeah, like I said before, he had the amnesia. And and I do wonder know, if, they, if that away. is what prompted a lot of those edits. Is It wasn't that it was too dark, because, come on, this movie's not too dark. And even even with what we know about the original cut, I still wouldn't say it was too dark. But I wonder if it was all about running time. If they were like, nope, we got to cut 15 minutes. And that, and so that's why they were like, well, we, we lose this, we rejigger this, we move this around. Like I, I feel like that was probably more of the goal than anything. Because again, the whole point was to make it more kid-friendly. And, you know, they're like, oh, you know, two hours and 15 minutes is too long. Kids get bored. Well, and also having a subplot, you know, it's all about repressed memories and psychological, you know, talk and all that kind of stuff for, you know, a kid from, say, the age of five to 12. That's probably going to be pretty boring to them. They were so damn proud of that line. And, oh, I'm, yeah. and I'm sure it was Jim Carrey. You know, like it, like I, I've got to believe that 70% of his jokes were just him. Cause that's why, I mean, cause again, that's why you hire him. You just should also know when, when to ask for more and when to ask for less. There's another shot again in all the magazines and stuff with Chase on the couch and Jim Carrey in that costume, like injecting her with something as well. Hey, this is a kid's movie. You just got done saying it, pal. <laughs> She's on the casting couch. No, a bit like a oh. like he was injecting her in the neck with something. Like, yeah. It was again, it was in all the cards, the movie magazines, all that kind of stuff. It was a, another shot that we never saw. I need another break. Be right back. Carry on. And he's like, fuck this. I've had enough of this movie. These I'm out. I'm, I'm gonna go in the other room and watch Batman <laughs> the animated series. Call me when it's done. <laughs> <laughs> but again, this, this whole thing you know like with the numbers and stuff like it like it's clever but out of all of them how come you know is it is like perhaps one and eight 
perhaps one and eight or 18. Why those two numbers? You know, to get them to the letter R, it's, it's very, you know, reverse engineered. That was a little Batman 66 coming to that conclusion right there. Yeah. <laughs> You're like quite bright despite what people say. That's kind of funny as well. But again, like, you know, the fact that he's got a different suit for the finale in this movie, story wise, makes complete sense. Badass. Again, yeah, badass. It's the first time we get the badass. Well, I but mean, the movie bat- opens up on bat crotch, so why not? Well, it opens up on the belt. No, it but, opens up on crotch. That's but, crotch, but, Brendan. But for, the, for Batman and Robin, there's no reason. They're just all in different outfits. I do dig how the bat wing's like hanging upside down like a bat there. That's And that's I fun. look honestly, I love this Robin costume. I think it's great. For the way the costumes were in the original four movies, this is a really good Robin costume. Arguably speaking, I, I would say I think the Robin costume's probably the best looking one in the entire movie. And I, I don't have any problem with the the first suit that Batman was wearing either necessarily. I just think this suit looks good. I mean it's it looked you would never look at that suit and not know it was Robin. Mm. Unless you had no idea who the hell Robin was. In which case I don't want to know you. Here he is. And this is why I don't drink when podcasting. <laughs> We were just talking, Andy, wind up watching about, this. about the um, the Robin costume. What are your what's your take on on that? Being I, a big Robin fan, I think it's pretty good. We, actually, we really like it. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty good. Um, it's and it's it's totally how Robin would look within the aesthetic that was selected, starting with Batman eighty nine. You know, yep, it's faithful enough, but it's through that lens. Um, I did see a meme though that was going around last week. I don't know if you saw it, where they're like, "Hey, remember." Uh, remember Batman Forever? It was so 1995 that Robin wore a Sega Genesis controller on his face. <laughs> but Again, no, it's, the, it's the that, suit's it's good. It's the domino mask through that aesthetic. And, yeah. Uh, and look, honestly, it's better than the, the mask that was in all the promo art and for a lot of the merchandise as well. I mean, yeah, I always thought it was it was a little big. Yeah, I always thought it was a little big. You didn't need to put the the logo in the middle, but eh. overall, I think the the costume is good. There's the Batman thumbs up gif. Commissioner Gordon, use that a time or two. Haven't we done a good job by doing nothing? Go home, everybody. Shake. I I love how they just wave, shake hands, and they go home for the night. They're done. Batman's got it. By this time, it literally in this movie, you know. This is where Commissioner Gordon took the the change from being somewhat of a police officer to being um, Chief O'Hara. Yeah. And a a shitty Chief O'Hara at that. Yeah, this whole... That was definitely not Chris O'Donnell driving that boat. (laughs) I do like like the boat. I think it looks kind of cool. I think the these two vehicles look great. I'm not crazy about the Batmobile in this at all, but I, I do like the the boat and the Batwing quite a bit. Even though the boat basically looks like the Batmobile on water. I mean, yeah. I did. The, the Batboat's actually a movie world. It's still on display there. Oh, yeah? Well, what, yeah. 14 miles north of me is the duck from Batman Returns. So, uh, oh, nice. Now what? <laughs> hey! <laughs> It's not a competition. I was just pointing out a fact, but okay. Also, the Batmobile from Batman Returns, too, if you want to get technical. It does shit me that every vehicle gets destroyed in this movie. Yeah. Well, and I, I do wish that the Batwing and the Batboat had more to do. You know, they both yeah. sort of just use yeah. them to get to the lair, and then they both get shot down. There's not much. They don't really get to do anything. No, they're they're transportation only, more yeah. or less. And my favorite, listen, I think that Batwing looks cool and, and whatnot, but my favorite thing about it is the way it was, I was telling Brendan when you stepped out there for a second, my favorite thing about it is how it hangs upside down in the cave like a bat. I think that's awesome. 
I'd love to know how it gets there. I mean, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, it's like, no, it's a, it's a cool idea. I don't know how you do it, but yeah. The bat torpedo. That thing. And Robin's just like, oh, I'm just going to throw a net on these guys. I'm done. Away we go. The bat sub? No, he was the bat torpedo, though. Yes. Yeah. All right. I know it's cheesy. I know it's stupid. I know it's goofy, but the holy rusted metal thing cracks me the F up every time. Oh, look, if if they were going to do it, I mean, and look, I know you can't really use the word subtle in this movie, but it was a subtle way of doing it. Like, it wasn't... They could have gone way over the top with it, but they, you know... And I do like Kilmer's reaction to it as well. Huh? <laughs> mm. It's so dumb. It's so bad. But it's it's funny to me. I, I can't help it. I remember we got a massive laugh opening day in the cinema. Yeah. I remember a lot of people opening night groaning when he said, holy rusted metal, Batman. And then they kind of, you know, explained why he said it. And they were like, oh, okay. They're taking the piss out of it, as Brendan yeah. would say. Taking a piss. Which is funny, because, you know, the two Schumacher movies embrace the 66 series. <laughs> There's more of this rave lighting. You do have to wonder how much, but I mean, from what I gather, Michael Uslan likes this movie, but, you know, he spent, what, a decade or more fighting to get, you know, the dark and serious Batman and three movies in where we're here. Yeah. I, I think Michael Uslan likes all the movies because every time they make one, he makes a lot of money. That's true. I love the shot of Robin here after he headbutts Two Face. The one that was in the trailer, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that one. That's a cool shot. Yeah, I remember seeing that in the trailer and being like, "Oh, we're finally getting Robin!" Ah, I will say, like, I, I wish Robin. I, I mean, it's tough to get him in, in the suit earlier, but I just wish he had more to do in this too. You know, like <laughs> by the time he finally suits up, it's like. He smacks around Two Face a couple times and then he gets captured. Well, I mean, I like I get it. You know, you're gonna introduce him, you do it at the end of the movie, but the problem is the the problem is the next movie, because you never get to see them be Batman and Robin. Right. Because straight off in the next movie they're fighting and hate each other. Yeah. I mean you you, you really only get it in the opening sequence in that movie. When they go after Mr. Freeze. So yeah, like yeah, here like you you know you just get him in the climax and he looks good. He just doesn't get enough to do. And then yeah, you're right. Like then they sort of jump ahead. Oh, is this the the rocket boosters on the boots? Yeah. 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 Uh, the cutters. You know, it's the sonar modifications. You know, you're gonna. Yes, I've still always thought that rocket could boots have just, and could sonar have... make uh, completely. Yeah, makes per perfect. It could have fit through the. It could have fit through the gaps in that thing anyway. I reckon. I've always. Thought. If he has rocket boots, why not just activate them and fly to the top of this thing instead of going through all this weird Rube Goldberg stuff? I hate this. I've, I've never liked this Riddler costume. Oh, God, it's hideous. Everything yeah. about it. Yeah. I, I, I don't dislike the mask. Like, I mean, you know, take away the silver sparkles and stuff, no, but the idea no, of having everything the about question it. mark. Everything I, about I like it. the question mark on the mask, but... Everything yeah. about it. Did I mention everything? It's about too it. much. The hair... So weird. I wish they'd acknowledge somewhere that, like, he had a series of wigs that he wore. Otherwise, you're meant to believe it's his hair, and he just keeps styling it. <laughs> <laughs> they should show that. 
Yeah. As he's like, oh, Batman's coming. I better do my hair. He's going to be here soon. And I have a new outfit well, I mean, just for know, the occasion. He's got he's got normal Edward Nygma, well, you know, normal Bruce Wayne hair. And then next scene, he's got a flat top. And now he's got this hair. Like, it's got to be wigs. I know I'm trying to apply logic where uh, logic doesn't yeah. apply. But this is still. the most meta question asked in the entire film. They just went past, when I said earlier, like, I love the line for the Riddler of, if knowledge is power, then a god am I. That's a great line for the Riddler, but they ruin it. But the with the delivery and the stupid reverberation they add to his voice, like, it could have been a really cool Riddler moment, and they they blew it. But at least they acknowledged it was over the top. That's right? true. Uh, I mean, yeah, you're not wrong. The way they got that duct tape around her mouth, I bet she's really glad that's a wig too. <laughs> her, her hair's in there. That'd hurt like buggery getting that off. Well, he's definitely young enough to be a virgin. Given that one of his dreams is being bare naked with a girl. Well, that's because his dream is being bare naked with a girl. <laughs> that doesn't mean he's a virgin. <laughs> He was living that circus life, okay? Jesus Christ. And yeah, he was, you know, adopted by a Bruce Wayne, so. I remember people back in the day being like, how did he get into the other tunnel? Like, you know, it's like, it was the same one, guys. Like, to save them. It's like, it was the same tunnel, like, you know, it was the same thing. They fell down the same hole. It wasn't two separate ones. I've ne yeah, I've I've never heard anyone question that, but yes. I I remember as a kid people saying that. It's like, no, it was the same thing. And the fact that Batman switches roles on him and kind of trips him up with his own game of giving him a riddle. Because his ego won't let him not play that game, you know? That's very Riddler, but... I realized watching, uh, re-watching the um, video for Hold Me Through Me, Kiss Me, Cool Me the other day, they show, like, all of this happened, like, they pretty much show the whole story of the movie in that music video. Wait, there's a story here? What? <laughs> That's why they didn't mind. <laughs> As they're like, does it there's, matter? There's parts of a story here. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah, so, this is stupid. Really bad. Bummer. <laughs> it was the 90s. That's no excuse. Right? Great shot of Nicole Kidman's stunt double's ass. This is also a pretty shameless ripoff of Batman 89 when he did this with Vicky. Falling See, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. <coughs> Good call back to the Flying Graysons thing where they reach up and the one's there to save him. I mean, that's... See, this yeah. did, this didn't bother me so much. Like, cause he, I mean, he used his grappling gun twice. But you cut to Batman and Robin and the three of them, they use their grappling gun in the finale like at least seven or eight times each. I feel like that shot of Robin when he like looks down while Batman has a hold of his bonds was in like every trailer and TV. That was in a, that was yeah that was a trailer moment too. He looked cool. Actually, the shot here of um, Kilmer, he looks very Michael Keaton there as well, looking down at Dick. <laughs> <laughs> How the hell did he get down there? <laughs> 
<laughs> they should have had a cutaway of him just slowly climbing down that little ladder, the little question mark ladder. <laughs> <laughs> and then they should have just stood there and just watched him and waited. And he's like, I'm coming. I'm coming. Just give me a second. Neither directly nor indirectly has Batman ever killed anyone outside of Batman v Superman. Ever. Just glad he packed 100 coins just in case. Well, he was going to the arcade after he got done oh, saving Chase. Oh, see, that actually makes sense. To play the Batman Forever video game. Was there one? Oh, shit, yeah. I had it on, funnily enough, what, what you guys called Sega Genesis. We got, we called wait, the... Wait, uh, say that again? Say that again? What? You guys, you had the Sega Genesis. The what Genesis? Sega. Is that anything like a Sega Genesis? Sega. Well, it's, called, it's called Sega over here. It's like oh, how you guys, you guys say... You mispronounce everything with your no, schedule. It's like how you guys say um, Nokia, but it's Nokia. But anyway. And, and your U's and unnecessary E's and words and such. <laughs> <laughs> and your HBO's. That, that's the one that really cracks me up is your HBO. Do you guys say Z or Z? Z. Huh. We use the we use the Queen's English. That's actually funnily like way off topic, but that's a um a real thing when you're a little kid here, you know, because we get Sesame Street and stuff, and like say you, you know you, as a kid growing up, you'd learn the alphabet through Sesame Street, and then you get to school and they'd have to like drum it out of you to not say Z to oh. say Z. Yeah. First shot of Arkham Asylum in a there's, movie. There's Arkham. I mean, yeah. It was supposed to be and the these beginning. shots were actually taken from the opening scene, yeah. But I, I, this guy, yeah, the, the, not just in name, but with the fright wig and stuff was definitely the homage to Tim Burton. But in all three movies, too, it's the first time that we actually see a criminal, you know, one of the villains get locked up. Yeah. Yeah, they've got a 25% survival rate at this point. <laughs> and Schumacher did say, he, he said, he goes, well, you know, just in case. Well, so, the thing is, too, if they were going to keep making sequels, they were running out of villains fast. Yeah. There's a reason... To, Mr. Freeze and neither Mr. Freeze or Poison Ivy didn't die. Yeah. And they could have, I mean, you could have backtracked on even Two-Face's death in this if you really wanted to. Well, they kind of do in Batman and Robin. His costume's in the Arkham scene. Yeah. I just assume they peeled that off his corpse. <laughs> and they're like, we're keeping this. And then hung it up in the asylum yeah. as a trophy. Yeah, to we're keeping know. this. This is what happens, You could guys. be here or you could be where he's at. Take your pick. Because at this stage, the only surviving villains, you know, assuming Two-Face did die, is Catwoman and Riddler. And Catwoman yep. is arguably not a villain by the time it's all said and done, so... Mm. That's why I didn't count her in the percentage numbers I threw out. Yeah, it's funny, I do remember leaving the cinema in, in 95 and saying to my mum, if they do another one, I'm sure, I, you know... I think they'd have to use Mr. Freeze. Like, he's one of the only big villains left. Sure enough, I was onto it. Alfred being a dirty cuck. <laughs> <laughs> he takes what he can the get big, these days. A big smile on his face. That's what they should have done in the next movie instead of giving him the shitty dying subplot. They should have given him the plot from the animated series where he gets... He gets to go on a date, and Poison Ivy fucks it for him. <laughs> now, people pick on this climax scene because the ears move. Uh, it's the entire cow. It's not just the ears. But the whole thing shakes. And I've seen fans go, oh, I never noticed that until someone pointed out. I was like, how could you not notice it? It's Batman. Oh, I noticed it. It's a silhouette it's, yeah, of away. Batman. How do you not notice that the ears are flopping all over the damn place? And then the best song from the soundtrack. Dun, 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 dun. Ooh, John Favreau even gets a credit? Yeah. Good for him. 
He didn't do shit. <laughs> That's a hell of a riff, too, in that. I love this U2 song. It's such a killer. So 1995. I, I, did, uh, I did, on the day of the anniversary, I listened to the soundtrack. I hadn't vi- revisited it in many years, but I did. And it was funny because we were talking about it, Brendan, and I was like, I was like, yeah, like there's some great songs and there are a lot of songs I skip. And I played it on my phone and I was like, oh, I like all these songs. And wait, how is it over already? And I realized I'd only put like six of the songs on my phone because those were the six that I liked. <laughs> I listened to it for the first time all the way through in years on the end of the day of the anniversary as well. And I think it's just probably because I've gotten older uh, and, you know, my tastes have matured a bit. I actually liked more songs than I remember liking. There, I mean, there I've are never listened there's some to good it, ones. Ever. Yeah. Not once. Oh, really? Because during this time, I listened to pretty much heavy metal exclusively. Okay. Like See, the only non-heavy metal thing that I was like way deep into at this point was Alice in Chains, and that was arguably pushing the metal line. So, I think this is even for, like for you too. This is kind of a heavy song for them. Yeah, I guess for for them. Yeah, I would say them. it it might be my favorite U two song because I'm not it a big U, I'm not a big U two fan. Me either. <laughs> they've got stuff I really like and they've got stuff I really don't, but my personal favorite is still haven't found what I'm looking for. Okay. I like one is pretty good. It's a good song too. Yeah. And um, what's that, what's that really cool one that Bono doesn't even sing the numb. Is it? Yes. I love that one. That one's cool, but yeah, the soundtrack pretty good. It was fun to everyone, revisit it. Yeah, everyone goes on about, you know, you talk about Batman forever and they just straight away go to kiss from a rose. I'm like, no, Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me, Kill Me, thank you. First ever cassette single I ever owned. Is it is a First cassette like single? a cassette? Cassette, like a cassette, you know, like you, you, you could buy singles. Oh, a cassette, right, cassette. I think yeah. he's doing it on purpose now. Yeah. I really do. Learn to talk cassette. right. Cassette single? What do you want? No, talk right. It's a cassette. Damn Australians don't know how to speak. We used to, we used to call them cass singles. Oh, they just love making shit up as they go along down there. I swear <laughs> they're insane. <laughs> well, guys, we did it. All right, no well, fights. Batman forever. Well, we gotta stick around for the post-credit scene, right? Oh, <laughs> that's right. Where we see uh, can't have a superhero movie without a post-credit scene. Yeah, Tommy Lee Jones pops out out of the water and says, "I'll be back." I was going to say, Joe Schumacher stabs Val Kilmer and gives George Clooney a call. <laughs> Schumacher and Kilmer wrestle. Fuck you. No, fuck you. No, fuck you. <laughs> and I did, I, I, I did like the, um, the, uh, the bat single behind the credits, too. Like how it's not the whole thing. It's just kind of like the highlights. Mm-hmm. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. I compare you to a kiss from a rose on the grave. I do really Ooh, love that the, song. Oh yeah, it's got the lyrics in the closed captioning. Strange how it feels, yeah. Now I actually really like your Seal too. Roses so. in blue. Seal's great. I, I had the single of that song as well. <sighs> the cast single. I did. Yes. Oh, amazing. Um, I just paid for Seal to come sing it to me whenever I was bored. <laughs> I I would beep him on his beeper. On his beeper, yeah. And he would swing by yeah, McDonald's. He used to be married to Heidi Klum or something. Yeah, yeah, yep. he was. All right, yeah, we bat survived. Signal, the bat signal is not a beeper. The bat signal is not a beeper. Now, let's go get a superhero burger from McDonald's. Oh, Say hi to En Vogue that, on the corner. That's the second best sandwich in McDonald's history, right behind the McJordan. It was amazing. Yeah, see, you got, again, you, you say sandwich, but it's a fucking burger. No, we don't say sandwich. We say burger. It was a burger. It was delicious. It was, it a was. burger is a sandwich. It was gluttonous, but it was amazing. Because it was three burger patties on a long bun. It was amazing. I mean, I would have preferred four, as Kama will be quick to tell anybody. Oh, I was there. I witnessed that. That was totally a mistake. I asked them what the hell it was, and the next thing I know is they served it to me. I, don't, I didn't order it. I said, what is this? They're like, hand it to me. Jamie, I mean, it don't apologize. 
own it. Listen, I, I'm, I'm I not believe saying I wouldn't have ordered it if I'd known what it was. I didn't say that at all. I'm just saying it was a happy coincidence. Live your best burger life. The more patties, the better. I got you. Is this when you did your Man of Steel thing? Yeah, Man of Steel yeah, yeah. at Billy Goats in Chicago. Seven years ago this week, as a matter of fact. Oh. All right, guys. The time Andy and I first met. Uh, it was so delightful. And look at us now. We're family. <laughs> now I want a McJordan and a Hero Sandwich. Thanks a lot, guys. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, fun times, guys. Batman Forever, 25 years. Holy shit. So you feel old. Yep. Um, so hopefully y'all enjoyed watching along with us, but let's give some overall closing thoughts now that we've watched together as, as family. Jamie, why don't you start? Uh, my, my opinion has shifted drastically from what I thought of this when I was 20 to what I think of it at 45, but it's got a lot of problems. It's got a lot of choices that were made that today I don't think were the best choices that could have or should have been made. Uh, but I, I still am entertained by it. I mean, I can watch it and roll my eyes and be mad at some of the things that they did, but I would say it's almost an even split of things I like and things I don't in this film, which, which probably sounds more negative than I mean it to, but I, I still, I, I don't hate the movie. I, I, I mean, there's a couple things I do hate, but you know, what are you going to do? Um, it's entertainment value. I mean, it has some entertainment value, and I think it has a couple of decent Batman moments to it. And I don't think the costumes, for the most part, I mean, some of the Riddler choices were. <laughs> but like the Batman costume, Robin costume, uh, sugar and spice costumes, eh, eh. Uh, <laughs> I think we're all pretty well done. So I like it. I don't love it anymore, but I do like it. All right. Um, Brendan, because it's your day, I'll give you the final word. And uh, so I'll just say, kind of what I said earlier is, I mean, you guys know I don't like the movie. I don't think it's a good movie. I think it's a mess. It's all over the damn place. I think a lot of it's annoying. The performances can give me a headache. A lot of the stylistic choices give me a headache. It's just, it's just too much. There just wasn't, uh, you know, Schumacher had taken his, his assignment a little too seriously, and he just, he didn't know when to rein it in. But... I appreciate it for its nostalgic value. It is fun to go back 25 years, to go back to the summer of 1995, when this was, I mean, it's just a big candy-coated summer confection. And that's, you know, all it is. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And so I appreciate it on those terms. I, I do pop it in every now and then, just, just for that reason, for the nostalgic purposes. And there's some nice visuals here and there. You know, there's some moments that Batman looks cool. There's some moments where Robin looks cool. So... It has its moments, but like I said earlier, for me, it works best when I treat it more like a screensaver or background noise. It's not something I watch as a movie and get really invested in, but it's something I'll pop on where I'm doing something else and be, you know, and just kind of enjoy it as, as background noise. For the people who love it, God bless you. I don't love it, um, but that's okay. Uh, I'm glad you guys love it, and hopefully you guys have fun celebrating 25 years of it. Um, but yeah, I mean... I ain't going to change my mind, but it is what it is. So, Brendan, why don't you take us home? <laughs> well, I'm one of those guys. I, I love it, and I, I have spent the week um, celebrating it and remembering it. And like I've said you know, before in the commentary and in a million other places, like – I can look at it and I, I see the flaws and I get it. And, and you know, I'm not stupid. Like, I, I understand that it's there, but people – tend to forget i think how well received this movie was you know it it had the biggest opening weekend of all time and this was you know after movies like jurassic park and everything like it was the biggest opening weekend of all time it was the biggest movie of 1995 like people loved this movie and yes it, it led to one of the worst batman movies of all time but no, not one of these. <laughs> yeah, the I I will I will always love this movie. It holds a special place in my heart. This was this was my you know, June nineteen ninety five, summer for you guys obviously, but it was it was my my Batman eighty nine 
summer, but it would be winter here. Like th- this movie, it, it this movie is my childhood. It, it, there's really no other way to say it. This is whenever I think back to being a kid, I, I think back to this movie and everything around it and, and how much it meant to me at the time. And for, for that reason alone, it will always, always have a special place in my heart. And, you know, the, the nostalgia that I have for the movie is far, far greater than the product of the movie itself. But again, I, I'm not going to argue with you and say it's the best Batman movie ever out of the original four movies. It's definitely my favorite. Um, it's not the best. I mean, that's, that's Batman 89 hands down, but it's, it's my favorite. Um, so yeah, I, I love it. I always will. And, uh, I'm not going to fight with anyone who, who disagrees because again, I do totally see where you're coming from, but I love it. I will always, you could say I will love it forever. Oh, Jesus. (laughs) And I wanted Sorry, to give you the to... last mo- the last word, but you said something that was patently false, which is everybody loved this movie when it came out. That's not true, Brendan. That's one hundred percent false. It had, by by but... your rules, it had the open, biggest opening weekend of all time. Yeah, it did. So did Batman Returns. It was the biggest movie of nineteen ninety five. Batman Returns was the biggest movie of nineteen ninety two. By your rules, everyone also loved Batman Returns, and we know that's not true. Well, they didn't love Batman and Robin the same. And Batman Forever, go check the reviews. Go check the tape. Everybody did not love Batman Forever in 1995. Just 11-year-olds did. Well, I was the demographic. I was the 11-year-old, so we all loved it. I'm just saying, like, the revisionist history of, like, oh, but everybody loved it in 1995. No, I was alive in 1995. I was 16 years old. People, everyone I knew was mixed on it, too. Critics didn't like it. Like, don't give me that shit. Don't pee on my leg well, and tell how, me it's rain. That's how I felt about it. <laughs> how you are. Everyone, ev- everyone I knew did love it. To, to keep the two of you from swinging at each other, this movie always seems to start fights on this show for some reason. <laughs> the Blu-ray ended, and it went through like 78 different FBI warnings in like different languages, and now it's on a... a the extras menu and under additional footage, it has deleted scenes. And one of the deleted scenes is called Dick's pain. I want to watch that just because it sounds like it could be interesting. I think that might be the one I was talking about with the, um, martial arts thing. I think it's been so long since I've watched those deleted scenes, but like, I don't remember that one. I just remember the, I remember the, yeah, the bat. I remember the, the escape, you know, in the rain with the, the bat must die. I remember those, but I don't remember the, I don't remember Dick's pain. Well, the, the titles are escape from Arkham. I just did play all. So I I wasn't paying attention to the titles. The titles are escape from Arkham, two faces, hate beauty and the Batman, Dick's pain, Bruce's dilemma, the secret of the bat cave and does it ever end? Well, okay. Watch them, watch them all except the beauty and the Batman one because it's terrible. Is it like Vicky waiting terrible or? No, oh, like it's, let's just say it's very Schumacher. <laughs> yes. Dick's pain is what you're talking about. Yeah. Batman. It's something about, I think the Riddler outsmarts him or something and he's giving chase and he ends up in this salon and let's just say it's a very, very. Oh my God. I remember that over now. The top salon. Yeah. And yeah. I remember that. Large woman is like, you know, hey, Batman, a little off the ears, and then they all laugh at him. Like, it's really bizarre. It's it's something out of the 60s show. I forgot about that, but now I remember. And it's terrible. <laughs> all right. Um, no, I, I, I understand how you felt. My point was just, like, don't, you know, don't say, don't make a, overarching well, statement I'm, I'm, about I'm how saying, everyone felt when it's false. My, Just don't do my that. Perspective. From my perspective. Because as an 11-year-old kid, everyone loved it. Like, we all, like, everyone I know, uh, we loved that movie. All right. That was a horrible kick. I see why the scene got cut now. That kick was horrible. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Well, 25 years of Batman Forever. We did it. We survived it. Some people love it, some people hate it, some people are in between, and I think the three of us are, uh, we check all three of those boxes. 
I was going to say, we kind of represent, don't we? Yeah. So that's us. Um, but anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed our little watch back. Hopefully you enjoyed watching it with us. I know most of you didn't even watch it. You just listened. I know how, I know how it goes. I know how you play this You know game. the movie well enough. It's fine. <laughs> Um, yeah, and hopefully you understand where any of us are coming from. Um, but we're not going to do emails or anything like that. We're going to catch up on those next time because, yeah, it's already two and a half hours and it is Father's Day. And we want Jamie to go enjoy his Father's Day with his family. So. See, that's, that's another weird one. Like, Mother's Day over here is the same day as you guys. Our Father's Day is not until September. Hmm. Well, really okay. Bizarre. Anyway. The more you know. Not important. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> Um, so there you go. Um, Brendan, tell our friends where they can find you. You can find me on Twitter at lovey 7 Same for Instagram. Um, you can find my podcast, The Nightlight, um, at thenightlight.podmin.com or facebook.com slash thenightlight or at nightlightpod <laughs> on Twitter. Um, and thank you to anyone who, you know, was a new listener after the release of the Batman Isolation Challenge episode. So I did notice, obviously, a, a large spike in downloads for that one. So if it was your first time listening, I appreciate it. If it's the only show you listen to, that's fine. If you want to keep going, glad to have you on board. And I, I released another episode today if you want to check it out. Because it's it's a very masturbatory episode of me. Not not so much raving about the movie, but just rem- like sort of remembering the time that, that Batman Forever came out. All right. There you go. Jamie, thank you as well. Happy Father's Day, brother. Thank you. I appreciate that. Tell our friends where they can find you. You can find me on Twitter at BatRaider3960 and Black Lives Matter. All right. You can't find me on Black Lives Matter. I just want everybody to know Black Lives Matter. So I'm just going to keep saying that. And if you don't like to hear it, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to stop saying it. Hell yeah. Damn right. Uh, Awesome. Well, I already told you where to find me, so thank you to Brendan, thank you to Jamie, and thank you to all you out there for joining us, as always, and for downloading the show. Please do subscribe to the show. Uh, Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, and visit holybatcast.com. But if you don't visit holybatcast.com, you can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Just search for Holy Batcast. Um, If you've got an email for the Wayne Manor mailbox, when we do get to it next time, you can send those to holybatcast at rf4rm.com. But that will do it. We will see you next time. Thanks for joining us. On behalf of Brendan and Jamie, I've been Andy, and we'll see you next time. Same bat time, same bat channel. Batcast is brought to you by real fans for real movies. Remember, the thoughts and opinions shared by the participants are theirs and theirs alone, and do not represent the companies or organizations they happen to work for. you made extra. Who the hell are you? Just a friend. But you can call me the Riddler. Oh, <laughs> you dead is more like it. How did you find us here? <laughs> but then if I talked, what would keep you from slaying me, old segregated one? By the way, that's never gonna heal if you don't stop picking. Oh.